You are listening to Shoot and Scoot, the Flames of War Team Yankee, Fed of Nation, Nam, and Great World Podcast that tries to make sense of the weird and wonderful world of 15mm wargaming with our tongues firm in our cheeks, our pants as butt to the ground, and our dice, more often than not, failing to shoot and scoot every episode. We invite you to join us on our many hobby misadventures on Facebook and on the blog at breakthroughassault.co.uk and to shop online at Battleford Hobbies because Hammy has locked himself out of his house. <laughs> yeah, he did, yeah. <laughs> Live? We've got live update yeah. on this. Is he actually still stuck? No. Oh, right. <laughs> he had to wait a couple of hours because his partner was away at her games club. Yeah. And <laughs> back to after midnight. Yeah. <laughs> I love that man. If nice dice are your vice, then be sure to check out Dice of War, our dice sponsor here at Shoot and Scoot. And if you need bunkers to bust or autobahns to go too fast on, then also head over to frontlineterrain.square.site, our awesome, and I do mean awesome, terrain sponsor. They are pretty special. Yeah. I'm waiting. I'm going to wait. You've got yeah. to do it. Oh, sorry. Terrain. Be. Terrain. There we go. Excellent. There we go. If you'd like to contribute to this continued failed cross check of our podcast, you can now also become a patron supporter by following the link in the Breakthrough Assault blog. Pay one pound a month for your chance to also become internet famous. Yep. Whoop, whoop. I'm Eddie Fez Turner, broadcasting from somewhere in the south of England, and I'm joined by my co-host, Duncan Agrax Deficiency is no laughing matter, Gosling. <sighs> Honest, honestly, it's, it's it, my skin's gone see-through. <laughs> And Lee Ginger Ginger Eugenist Parnell. <laughs> hey, but that's Duncan's line. <laughs> yeah, that was me. <laughs> Duncan's but, but, on a half hour rant about eugenics. <laughs> no, I've nearly deflected it now, Lee. It's on your permanent record. <laughs> Welcome to episode 95, the one where Mike Everest never ages. Lee, what are we talking about tonight? Wait, are we having like two two Mike Everest related titles in a row. <laughs> we we are because yeah. I didn't edit the last one, so I had to come up with that one on the fly. But that's a oh dear, word. Lee, what are we talking about tonight? <laughs> tonight we are be we'll be covering Internet Famous, saying hello to our new patrons. We'll be looking at what we've been painting in Faces Spaces. We'll look at we'll be looking at what Eddie's been playing because anyone that actually has time for a game these days apparently. No, I, yeah. I, I just sacrifice front. important life decisions to gaming. <laughs> Yeah, you got a house now. That's important. <laughs> I don't have it yet. Oh God! Oh, I just, just jinxed, jinxed it. I just jinxed it. bad now. Game over. Failed the referencing, and uh, um, that's it. You will fail the referencing if they got us as references. Couch <laughs> references. Oh my God! Yeah. So you have an American wife and a Ugandan cat. How does that work? Yeah. Well, let me introduce you to my friend Duncan. Yeah, he's failed the MI six. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can tell I've been in the country for a long enough time because I'm on seven uh, uh, watch lists. <laughs> yeah, you can ask my GCHQ handler. He's over there. Look, hi, Dave. My friend Duncan got pulled up, pulled up for arms dealing, which is funny because he's not actually the arms dealer amongst us three. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> which is ironic. <laughs> um, where were we? Um, then we we'll are looking at the Nordic Forces book. <laughs> Uh, you know, by this time, let's face it, everyone else has covered it in depth. So, hey, yeah, including Battlefront and spoil all the points. Okay. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Pete. Shots fired. Yeah, Shots don't, fired. Yeah. Don't go to the points, lads, because we'll be covering it for you. So, we're just saving you some yeah, hassle. Exactly. <laughs> so. uh, yeah. uh, well, when we go into events, well, we'll, do, we'll talk about what's on so far with our 80th um, anniversary G Day slash oh, yeah. 100 episode slash. The picture of loser. Thing. <laughs> loser yeah. Slash warfare rant. Yeah. War, warfare rant, TCT, frothing. Oh, maybe you should call it war, 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 World War II Palooza. <laughs> World War II Palooza. I, I, yeah. I, 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 I start worrying about that point maybe we're underselling the whole you know, horror, horror of war thing, but you know, it's. A... <laughs> uh, I think you'll find there was plenty of children involved in that fighting. <laughs> terrain. Fun for all the terrain. family. Yeah. Pull up, exactly. Pull up terrain. <laughs> <laughs> we'll shoot and scoot. Oh my god, we're bringing you shoot and scoot soon with that. Um, <laughs> so, Eddie, do you want to introduce our two new patrons who are probably rapidly cancelling their subscription? <laughs> I do, I do. I want to give a big internet famous shout out to DJ Trenchy JJ spinning those discs, <laughs> ripping up the uh, the wartime uh, legends. And uh, so, so a bit of virulin, yeah, bit of yeah. virulin. We'll yeah. meet up, wicker, wicker, wicker again. Don't know, wicker, wicker, where? Don't know, wicker, wicker, when? Base drop. No, no, that'd be like Craig, <laughs> surely it'd be like Craig David. <laughs> and we'll meet again Monday. <laughs> Craig David, <laughs> like, I thought you're gonna be like Craig David, but like Adolf Hitler doesn't quite work. <laughs> <laughs> Heinrich Himmler, Hitler. can I get a Hitler? <laughs> yeah. That's an entirely different rally. 
Oh my god, please no one have this one in the car with the windows down. <laughs> Fatty Goering FM. <laughs> oh my god. I don't even know where we are on the podcast. We're already off the road. I feel hysterical. <laughs> we're, we're, we have our um, live, live traffic <laughs> live traffic coming from Rudolph Hare. He's somewhere over Scotland as we speak. It's historical war gaming, not hysterical war gaming. Yeah. <laughs> Got it all wrong. <laughs> Traffic update from Rudolf Hess. Putting the fun up in, to the un- fundamentalism, yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the, the eye in the sky. <laughs> oh my god, are we actually going to make it to 100 episodes? We're so close! <laughs> the plane in the mist, it's Rudolf Hess. I'm, I'm trying try to go with um, Too Big to Fail or something now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see clearly now, the cloud oh. hasn't gone. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Does this mean we're eligible for a government bailout now? We're too big to fail. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Thank you. I'm going, going for the F35 strategy. It's worked work for Lockheed. Yeah. It's a... well, that's what, what I mean. Le- le- leave the dust covers in and throw it off the side of a ship. That well, wasn't yeah. Lock- Lockheed's fault. That was the Navy apparently forgetting how to do carrier aviation after a 10 year break. There's great big red things that say removed before flight. It's not, it's not a suggestion, it's kind of more of a recommendation. <laughs> You see, you have to yeah, remember, the Royal Navy wrote the book on carrier aviation. Fortunately, <laughs> the modern Navy has the big book of carrier aviation. <laughs> and then threw yeah. it overboard. <laughs> is, it, is it a pop-up book? No, it's fine. It, it, all Unless I you get the seat. <laughs> so, so obviously, in my position, I have some insider knowledge that I can't quite share. But all I can say is they bought a lot of packets of rice and <laughs> <laughs> stuck the aircraft in it to dry out. <laughs> Oh so that, that's one that's one patron Dan. that's What's one going? patron uh, yeah. and then a big shout out to casey pitt special Pittman, um who sounds like an american rap artist yeah pitbull Pittman. pitbull Pittman. he's gonna run kodak and kodak together i uh, uh, pitt special Pittman man pitt special is a yeah. special place in my heart especially after seeing the one at duxford where they, they <laughs> there's a guy in the uk who's gone through all the paperwork which is substantial because i looked it up uh to stick two Jet engines on the side of his pit special what? biplane. Yep, yep, it's a thing. I saw him at Duxford. It's incredible. So the small little, I say little, they're the size of an American cof- big coffee can jet engines. Right. So the ones that yeah. normally go in really big model airplanes. He's got two of those stuck to the side of the fuselage of his pit, spe- pit special airplane. Which already has a three hundred horsepower I'm, engine. I was about to say because the thrust to thrust to weight ratio yep. wasn't wasn't high enough for yep. him. <laughs> it is now one point one to one thrust to weight. Wow! So I went to Duxford. It was a big expense. It was a little bit disappointing because the crosswind limits, but we get there. Um, but to see this aircraft take off, go into knife edge, which is where it flies at ninety degrees to the horizon. Mm-hmm. And then pitch the nose up using the rudder, and then to hear and to physically hear a jet engine over the thrust of a three hundred horsepower Lycoming piston engine with the propeller is quite something in itself. But to watch the aircraft climb out vertically on its side was just phenomenal. So KC Pit Special Pitman, <laughs> that yeah, that is your work. Your, that's what you think there. Your work yeah, here is done. Special. Um, I mean, the other thing later on in the display. Um, they did a, a what's called a prop hang, so he climbs up vertically, uses full thrust in the engine to to hang the aircraft stationary in the sky, mm-hmm. and and on most um, unlimited aerobatic aircraft with the amount of power they have to the weight, they can get up there, and the torque of the air the engine turns the aircraft around, yeah, and it spins. It's called a, a torque roll, mm-hmm. so it will, it will hang vertically stationary in the sky, and the aircraft will rotate and spin round. Um, and you'll get, you know, two, maybe three of those before the aircraft basically falls backwards out of the sky and then recovers and starts flying again. On this pit special, I lost count at seven. Crazy. It, it pulled up and it rotated around seven times, staying still in the sky. And it's one of those rare things in all of my life of air show flying and, and, and aviation. You see something and go, that shouldn't happen. But But it is. That doesn't sound like he's understanding the third law of thermodynamics. No, no, exactly. I think I think he took Reynolds out the night before for a, yeah. a, an interesting date and got him very drunk. 
It's like <laughs> he looked at a B thirty six. The whole, the whole, um, you know, six, what was it six turning, four burning? And Seven, thought, yeah, six, yeah, yeah, six and six. Yeah, and four, I thought, yeah. you know, what, I want to try that on like a one third on a one third oh, scale. <laughs> it was incredible. And the best bit, the most British bit of the whole thing, is when we we, we saw it on the ground. Uh, we walked up, and the aircraft's there. And he's connected it to the back of the firewall, so it's in between the two pack things. And the the jet engines are, are, are angled outwards to avoid cooking his own tailplane, which is still <laughs> a wooden fabric tailplane. Um, <laughs> but but to 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 hark back to the F thirty five to prevent uh, dust and crap on the ground and bugs from getting into the intakes, he's covered over the jet engine intakes with like ninety nine p ninety nine p Tesco salad bowls. <laughs> it's so British, oh it hurts, but I love it so much. <laughs> oh, and it was it genuinely was and and I've seen there's a BBC interview with the guy and I'll send I'll send you the link so hopefully you can put it in the show notes so you guys can see this. It is just and, and the reason he did it is because he could. That's the best reason. Yes. Exactly. He said we could, and obviously there was a lot of things to go through to make sure it was safe and to make sure everyone was happy, but he he did it. Did he looked like the sort of man that, that stopped and thought, "Should I?" No, he thought, "Could I?" And and yeah, and just left and, it there. And yeah. Did yeah. and it had the resource. He, he says, "I can," so I will. And oh my gosh, fantastic! See, it's that kind of uh, actually that made this country great. It really is, in a way, <laughs> because because I mean that's the thing of all of all that you know, and I can I can only imagine the pile of paperwork that had to be done for it. But they persisted, and it got it done, and it was done in a safe way. And now we have a phenomenal one, you know, unique worldwide thing of a pit special with two jet engines on it. And, and the only thing I missed because it was done the different end of the airfield is after he landed, apparently he shut the, the propeller engine off, and then just taxied it back to its parking space under the power of the jet engines. Which is the other thing that would look very strange to see a propeller engine with its propeller stopped and the aircraft yeah. just moving around. <laughs> Lee, queue up Land of Hope and Glory, please. <laughs> oh, I don't have that on the soundboard. Yeah. Oh, finally. <laughs> we need that. We need that. <laughs> just, just a... uh, oh, and um, what's the other one? Landbusters. That's it. That's Oh, come on, Lee. Lee. Yeah, well, Lee. Lee. I know. We need I, that. I, I, I put it that too quickly. Well. Anyway, so there we go. Yes, <laughs> thank we you. Now join our list of patrons who now get access to our Discord. The chaos that the is chaos. Discord. Oh, the beautiful the chaos that is Discord. It is. Well, it's called Discord. It is discordant. <laughs> it is. It's nice. You actually get early access to the episodes, so you can listen to it twenty-four hours or so Sweet. before. Well, I remember actually it's put live generally. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of discordant, yeah. yeah. And also, yeah. they'll be on the list for when we do the T-shirt draw on the next episode. So, oh yes. So yeah, we should go in next episode. So, what we'll do is, anyone who's a patron, oh, by the time we get to the actual recording of the next episode, they'll be on the list. The big Excel sheet. I then hit randomize on. Lee, can I can I um, create uh, channels on the Discord? You can. Okay, I might ch- put one in for T-shirt ideas. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the next one's going to be surely Salt Bay Bomber Harris. I, mean, <laughs> I thought you were doing that one. I thought, is that... Yeah, that's what, that's what yeah. I mean. I've got to put that together so get it actually up on the yeah. on the site. I've got all the bits together. Yep. Yeah. Mmm, deliciously seasoned. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, fame grilled. Yeah. That's a spasm with the ball. <laughs> He's Argentinian, actually, which makes it even funnier. <laughs> anyway, um, on to... Um, faces basis Duncan what have you been painting um so I'm currently painting um was it six twenty twenty seven um eleven year olds <laughs> are you the BBC leak <laughs> no no, no. <laughs> I'm painting them like they're French girls though that's the problem so um there's a Titanic gag in there as well look at that I'm on, I'm absolutely smashing that cultural Don't gag on the Titanic. from the 90s um, yeah yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, yesterday's mean tomorrow. Well, it's only thirty years um, ago, but you know what's uh... <laughs> Hey, 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 hey! Everyone's got that rank stench of nostalgia in their nose now. It's coming out in the cinema. <laughs> Next episode, we we'll do a deep dive on the Titanic. Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One ping only. That's the that's the sub imploding. <laughs> <Yeah, that's... laughs> 
<laughs> it's got a good soundtrack. Under pressure. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no. That's crass, Eddie. Come on now. Come on now. You can't even have Yellow Submarine because it wasn't yellow. I mean, I don't even know what the attraction was. You're basically looking through like a 2P piece, at, like something that's poorly lit. I mean, <laughs> where are these millionaires and how can I just defraud them? Yes. I mean, my God. Someone, um, someone so, sent me a graph of Titanic death versus time. Yeah, I saw that as well. It's the, it's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> uh, does it... uh, um, but yeah, so I've been painting. Uh, I've got some Hitler Jugend. There was a brief discussion on the Discord about the colour of uniforms, uh, which means I'm now on another watch list because uh, <laughs> I've now got. Killing World War II um, kids school uniforms. No, 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 it was it was actually Hitler Hitler Youth all uniforms, and there was a lot of ones that looked dubiously like Scout uniforms. So I'm I'm, I'm not saying the two organisations are linked, but um, can I get Baden Powell had a moustache? He had a moustache. Can I get my Pants of House badge, sir? Exactly, no. my Pants of House. You've got to knock out three more yeah. IS twos. Yeah. Oh, hold on, wait. Oh god, can you imagine if the um the Scouts had a tank killing badge still? <laughs> like. I got my cookery badge, my woodsman badge, not tying. My five tank kill badge. <laughs> your, your what? My close combat badge. My hero of Stalingrad badge. What? Um, so I'm painting, I'm painting them. Uh, they're coming on a nice. I've got some Volkstone. So I've got their fathers as well. So it's not. It's an equal opportunity. <laughs> Grand- um, grandfathers, you mean? Defense force. Grand- grandfathers and uh, yeah. Oh no, that's worse. Yep. Hello, little guy. Yep. Do you want to come and see their puppies? Um, and I've painted them, and I'm just painting now some uh, some hundred years of war Scottish Scottish Scottish, and I've finished some uh, ancient Ligurians as well for my Carthaginian army. Ligurian, oh, diversifying them. I have the. Have you got your Carthaginian slippers on now? I haven't. No, no. Uh, somehow they haven't been issued to me. I think it's because I'm doing it in doses. Uh, so if you do it in one stint, like, you get a pipe. Edge. Exactly, you get a pipe and a moustache that doesn't come off like Mike Everest. <laughs> a Just real like one. A, a real one, yeah. Um, I also finished the King Tigers and the... Well, yeah, King Tigers. So all of the stuff's done now for um, the tank training company. How many Tigers um, do you have now, Duncan? Tig- tiger 2s? Well, tigers, tigers, both. Plural. Um, are you counting like Ferdinands and things like yeah, that Yeah, I will, as well? in this case. Oh, Jesus. Um, There's 10 Tigers. Hold on. There's... Ten tigers. There's eight tiger twos. <laughs> there's six elephants. Uh, I'm going to use sperm tigers. I don't believe in them. I got one Ferdinand, and that's an objective marker. Um, Are you going to raise your hand? And you have a tiger fetish it? problem. I'm not. It was all by accident. All by accident. You're on I can stop yeah. any time I like. I can stop any time I like. Um, but these ones are quite nice because they're all beaten up and they got bits chipped off them and they got. Um, Oh, they like look the red amazing. panels on them and things. So. so yeah, I was quite happy with them. But I've re- I have realised that um, six is probably too many, and eight's just why have I bothered? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. So I have I do have to evaluate my life choices because apparently they're quite poor at this moment. Um, but no, I, 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 they've come up nicely. And um, yeah, I've, I've got uh, however many one, two, three. I've got another three Hitler Youth and. Yeah, and then another Volkstone to paint as well. So it's quite a lot of it's ch- quite a lot of children, and then I've got some Bassage undercoated as well. Some more Bassage. So <laughs> what, what we're talking about? To mend it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they bullied me into it. I, I realised I had more than I thought I had as well, which I don't. I don't like it when that happens. No, never, it never happens. So obvious. but you go. Oh, you go. I've got. I've got a few of them knocking around. <laughs> oh, hold on. One, two, three, seven. <laughs> I've got seven. I've got seven. Hold on. How many did I paint? I painted... I've got 13. I've got 13 Bassage companies. 13 Bassage companies? Well, you know, the individual... Yeah, if you want to do them as an individual company with... um, Was it like 12 or 13 stands in? Something like that. So that's over 130 yeah. stands. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, I worked it out. It's about... It's quite a lot of... It's quite a lot of figures. It's about 700 figures, I think. Oh, wow. Was that actually fit on a 6x4 board? I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> Let's play that game together. Because it could all be one formation as well. well what's the, what, what would be the historically accurate op, op for? Op, you know, opposing for? Uh, Iraqis. Yeah. Iraqis oh, with machine no. guns. <laughs> that's, my, that's my Desert T-72s, isn't it? Yeah, Desert T-72s. 
PCRs. And all you've got to repel is, like, I don't know, it's 12 per company. Yeah, so you're looking at maybe, like, 30 or 40 RPG US fans. Well, I can say it's a good thing this game doesn't modify, doesn't model an uh, ammo expenditure. So. Yeah. <laughs> 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 It'd be like that um, Charlie Charlie Sheen scene, isn't it? Where he's, like, knee deep in, <laughs> in copper rounds. <laughs> The first massage has the rifle. The second massage has the ammunition. But the first massage <laughs> gets shot. No, oh, only two. We haven't got that many rifles. Keep going. <laughs> the third massage has shoes. <laughs> <laughs> the third massage has the bandana. <laughs> <laughs> it's just spread across like eight blokes. <laughs> One second. But yeah, um, it's, it's, it's grim. But... Um, but no, I, I'm yeah cracking on with bits steadily. Well done, bro. That sounds great. Steadily, steadily. Yeah, it's been well. It was it was quite a long time since we recorded That's last. True. Um, which Dar- Darren will tell us. <laughs> yeah. Um, exactly yeah. how long it's been in in, in parsecs. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think I've done a bit more than I thought I had as well, which is nice. That's that's nice. Finding out you got more figures than you thought is not nice. Finding out you got more painted um, than you thought is always nice. That is always nice. Yeah, that is always nice. So I've actually resisted in um, in the, picking anything up today, though. I am going to have a little look on Prime Day. I am going to do that. Oh, that's good. Yeah. It's, pri- it's, pr- it's Prime Day today and tomorrow, so yeah. Yep. I mean, that's no good for anyone listening. Sorry. <laughs> well, but, I like, might get this out uh, by tomorrow morning. I won't get this out by tomorrow morning. <laughs> no. Yeah, maybe, maybe we could just put a haru on the um, Patreon Discord and just say mm-hmm. um, Prime Day. I mean, people will know, but I mean, there's already some bonkers deals on Prime, so you probably get like a. British tank company for three pound fifty or something. <laughs> that, that sounds like Jeff Bezos's uh, sustainable shopping order. Yeah, yeah model. totally. <laughs> sustainable mm. new world shopping order. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Spend yourself thin. What? <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, but yeah. So that's me. Cool. Is it me next? Uh, I can never remember. I think it's, I think it's me. But if you want to go yeah, next, no, it's, no, no, it's, it's, your, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's Lee and then me. I go, Lee. What have you been painting? Well, I have finished commission at long last. What? Yeah. How? Yeah. Yesterday's yesterday's news when? that is it's taking what? forever. Yes. Is it, was that today you finished? Oh no, I finished. I finished it like literally about um, oh, just a, f- a few days before the end of, end of June. Old Rip Van Parnell over there. Believe, I would have been yeah. shouting from the treetops that that was over and celebrating the passing, like. No, it, it was more like a sort of very um, polite fart. <laughs> it was a... well, mm. Awfully <laughs> glad that's over with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Terrible show. More of a, Montcom- a Montgomery shoot than a, uh, yeah. <laughs> a Patton's exactly. a Patton's ritual charge. Um, yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah, so I, got, I got those done and I put a palette cleanse on kind of doing the um, Battletech stuff. Oh. Yeah, you're painting the hair dryers, aren't mm-hmm. you? Job. Yep. Nice. Little little tiny hair dryers. So, ha- how long before you'll take your next co- uh, commission, then, Lee? Uh, heat death of the universe. <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> but but Lee, I've got some massage I need I need painting. Well, so this is what, this is what I was saying, uh, saying the other night. I might do commissions, but only on the basis of doing a platoon at a time or something. Yeah, not, not two entire occasional, occasional platoon rather than like five platoons and a company of air landing infantry that have been sneaked in. Jeez. Well, and also it was all camo. Like, what were you? Yeah. What were you thinking? So good, man. That's it, yeah. yeah. Americans. Yeah. British. Anyone. British yeah. normal. Anyone but the, Anyone but the Germans. Germans or Paris. Yeah. Oh, my God. But, um, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's, it's all done now. So Nice. I'm going to do about tech. That's the, most, do some big... that's the most British response. It, just, it was it fine. It was fine. It was fine. It was fine. Like my, my insides are weeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Only a little fine. bit, though. It's yeah. Fine. yeah, it's fine. I was going to get on to um, doing the VDV. VD, VDV after this, I think. Uh-huh. 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 Which ones? Uh, all, the, all, the, all the BMDs, basically. Oh, nice. Hmm. Nice. No, wait, 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 I've got all their, um, inf- their um, army's army infantry. I just need some rides for them. So. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that means you can, uh, you can get them all ready for getting stolen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Quick whitewash, bit of blue and bit of yellow. Get Mr. Mr. Good. <laughs> so yeah, that's me basically. That um, so Eddie, you, um, what have I been painting? Uh, 
that was like a child being asked where their home was. Yeah, is. so it was like, what, have, what is my name and what was I interesting doing? Interesting story I there. This dog came out yeah. of nowhere, and no, I because uh, Leviathan forty k ten edition oh, came around. Um, so I've been playing Warhammer tenth edition, Warhammer forty thousand tenth edition. Um, so I built some Primaris Space Marines, and I sprayed some of them oh, black really? and some of them red. Um, and that is as much as my hobby has been. I don't know. Did you use the airbrush, or was rattle it a rattle can? can? I mean, I'm... Rattle okay. can for Blood Angels. I meant to do more, but building was about as far as I got. I think that's pretty much... See, I hate building stuff. I want someone to build my stuff. I want to kill some builders. I love I building. We thing. should just do a trade. We should just be like, oh, I, I, I can, do planes of war tanks I can build in about less than two and a half minutes. Oh, I hate them. Snip, so snip, snip, bit of glue, bit of uh, mold line removal, done. That's it. Job's good. No. I love so building. Um, so, yeah. I, <laughs> I've, so, I've been building, playing 40K at the Games Club uh, the last three nights um, against uh, my old friend Jake, Jacob. Um, and last night was particularly hilarious uh, because I was halfway on my hour and ten minute drive, which I think it is from Little Hampton to Guildford. And uh, I was halfway there, and I realised that I had my bag, I had all the club stuff, I had the club cashed in, I had the club keys, I had my rule book, I had my date ta- dice, I had my tape measure, I had my Codex Army list. Um, you had your adult diapers. Yeah, I had my adult diapers, yeah. and uh, completely forgot my actual army. Cool. That's all yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, luckily, uh, Jake also has a, a beautifully painted Space Marine army in the boxes that I was able to text him. Go, oh, can you, br- can you bring that as well? Otherwise, I'm going to have to open the club up and just sit there for three and a half hours like a sad loser, <laughs> crying, <laughs> crying and rocking that I've wasted my one gaming opportunity this week. <laughs> yeah. And what's your big job here? I'll collect the yeah. money. Oh, I'm dear. the chairperson. I like- I come for the I come for the person. I get angry when I tell you that there's five minutes before we have to leave, and you're still dis- determining who's won the game and rolling dice. Oh, oh my god, it's so unfair! It? Oh, speaking of which, we need to talk about that Ooh. in events. Ooh. Ooh. Timing, we? Ooh. Ooh. There's, there's a tease. There's, 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 there's a little shadowing. bit of ankle just there. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> <Exactly. shadowing. laughs> Narrator, narrator. They did not talk about the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was never mentioned again. <laughs> it was never mentioned from every again. other sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. That is all I've been making or painting, which is terrifying. Oh, Edward. My ETC list is still not actually fully built. Oh, come on now. Come on. That's not that's around the corner. What do you mean it's not it's even, fully, even fully, built? fully built? I should be building it right now, but I'm just... Well, when's ETC? In four weeks' time. Oh, that's fine. You, you, yeah. you, you like, like, that means you've got, four, you got four, like four weeks and, and a day's time to do it. Yeah. So. I'll, uh, so I'll, I'll do it. I'll start in four weeks, and I'll have one day and do it then. Right? Yeah. That's how oh that Sounds like a plan. You've got to drive. You can't even do it in no, the I, car. Well, I can. It just, just makes it even more illegal. <laughs> can, <laughs> oh yeah. Just, can you can you get like, a Euro tunnel? At least be doing I'm this on the train. <laughs> I'm only, oh, I, I will have that, but I'll, um, I'm only picking Mark up from the airport, so he can drive from the left hand seat. Isn't that the way it works? Yeah, sure. You're going to let Mark drive. He's not even allowed to drive his own planes. <laughs> Terrain, terrain. <laughs> yeah. oh, he doesn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, building wise, I think that is all I've managed, sadly. Oh dear. Yeah, no, it's, it's okay. Yeah, ebbs and ebbs and flows. Ebbs and flows. I'm sure it'll work out. Yeah, so, I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll be right. it, the it, it was not it was fine. Not fine. <laughs> 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 what have we been playing then, eh? Well, this is where I come unstuck. So I've I've, I've played some more Glorium, and that's about it. How so did you find it? On. Was it good? I like more yeah. Glorium. It tickles it tickles my ancient and um, sort of also knows age. Meg, right? Meg, yeah. Meg after the um, shock. It's, 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 it's Megalodon. It's good, exactly. <laughs> Megalodon. I, one out of ten did not include half the fin based violent sea activities. I believed it would. <laughs> we sold no, one by the name. They especially- their special, their special effects were. Where's my, limited. where's my um, Sharknado? <laughs> oh my god, Sharknado, Sharknado ten, <laughs> the quickening. There could, there could be only um, ten. <laughs> exactly, but no, I, I, I quite like it. It's, it, it's not like. To, oh my god, I used to play DBM and I used to drive me up the wall. Measuring but, sticks. Um, measuring. Oh no, you still get measuring sticks in Meg. Still <laughs> measuring sticks. 
because it's base width. Mm. So unless you can easily measure 40 mil increments, I can't. I can't be bothered terrain, thinking like that. Terrain, terrain, pull up, much, pull up. I need to have a which I need. We also played, um, Luke's got some 28 mil moderns. Ooh. So we played some um, Seals versus Mog Edition um, or Somali. Be one side. Um, <laughs> It was. It, we started off well because I fired a GPMG and hosed down a seal that was stood behind a, a, a parcel. Of exactly. I mean, I didn't club him, so I didn't get pet. Peter didn't get angry. So was this using so um, spect- just... the Spectre rule set? Was it or? That's mm-hmm. correct. Yeah, um, and yeah, they were pretty good. I mean, it was funny because we thought, oh, this is going to be this is going to be over in minutes. There's only eight seals. We killed one in the first turn. Uh, we didn't kill one. Apparently, that. that was apparently the other seven were mighty pissed off by this fact. <laughs> yeah, and they um, apparently they're really yeah. good. So um, yeah, every time I shot, I missed, and then every time they, they did shot not. back, I <laughs> they died. Did not miss. Yeah. So I had um, yeah, I had all, all I had left at the end of the game was a very large, a very large man who looked a bit like Idi Amin with an equally large hat. And I don't think at that point I was going to be doing doing very much. So yeah, um, yeah. They're, they're quite interesting though. But next time, um, Luke said we're going to try toning it down a little because they are a bit like that was a bit of a chalk and cheese. Yeah. Um, in terms of ability, um, but that's fine. Sometimes it happens. You learn these things when you're playing the rules, and you go, "Oh, probably won't do yeah, that again." That was a bit one-sided. Yeah, I just want a technical now. I want a 28 mil technical. He's he's actually invested. You'll love this. Like when we get it together, you'll have to come up because um, he's bought a uh, oil tanker in nice. 28 mil. Is it odd? Is it, um, of M- is it odd of prime? No, 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 no. But you can do like yeah, you can do. Uh, Somali pirates. <laughs> oh, like an oil tanker boat. I right, thought, yes. I, 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 thought, I thought you meant like a, like a little eighteen ah, meter kind of yeah. thing. As well. I thought you meant no, like no, a no. truck. I was being no, reasonable no. for once, which is not like me. No, no, no. It's four and a half feet long. <laughs> what? So, yeah, it is a table. Oh, oh I know. Yeah, this 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 is the sort of thing when you get Luke's one of those people that when you can, if you can weaponize enthusiasm a bit like Mike, <laughs> magic magical things happen. <laughs> weaponize yeah. enthusiasm. Yeah, exactly. You go, well, that would be oh. really cool, wouldn't it? And it just sits there and gnaws away at them. <laughs> and they go, oh, uh, yeah, that would be cool, wouldn't it? Oh, I bought yeah, seven would... of them. What? Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, you bought how much motorway, Mike? Oh. oh. It's the whole of the Bavarian it's free spaghetti and, oh. and green stuff meatballs is a lovely dessert. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a nourishing meal. But yeah, that's that's all the games I've been playing. So uh, the rest of them have all been theory hammering nice. in my head. That's more than I've played. So that's uh... Neil Poirly. Yeah. So it's been a barren few weeks. I've just basically trying to do air shows and stuff like that. So. Oh, it's your busy period though, yeah, isn't we'll it? Get, we'll get yeah, one of the events ones. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, what have I actually played? I played some planes of what? Lots of forty k. Um, played finally a board game called Pan Am, uh, which well, as, in, like, the as in the airline, which I bought I think eighteen months ago, but then didn't have enough luggage space to bring back from America because it's oh the irony, <laughs> tar- yeah, exactly. It's a Target exclusive, so it sat in the luggage until uh, Tacey went back for a family uh, reunion, and I was like, "Can you bring this back for me? <laughs> Can you move exactly. back again?" Yeah. Yeah. And and also some other stuff from Target that's exclusives. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm oh, oh, not. It, it, was any of this battery power? No, no, it's all, all legit, all cardboard and plastic. It's all good, it's all good. Oh, okay, yeah, and, okay, and, okay. And, and half okay. a ton of uh, goldfish crackers and uh, jerky, oh. um, Slim Jims. I don't like American snacks. There's a select amount that we do. Sorry, Tacey, I just, I just like it's like they don't know what they're doing with chocolate. Oh, I don't never, trust anyone that messes chocolate. up chocolate. No, the irony was she took about 20. I say twenty kilos, about ten kilos worth of Cadbury's chocolate out with her to trade and give away. What's yeah. the street value of that? Oh, who knows? Like, <laughs> she was rolling around in the Grand Camaro. It was, you know, yeah, it's insane. Um, exactly. You've seen Brady's yeah, 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 yeah. You got the good stuff. It's got purple. Um, See, and I don't trust. They don't like Marmite. No. Well, I don't, I don't like I'm not sure about either, that either. But... No, I know. I, I mean, you're allowed not to like it. But I just don't think they understand no. it. I put Marmite <laughs> on my toothpaste and it was disgusting. Well, yeah. Yeah. What, what, what are you doing? Stop doing <laughs> yeah. But. And Jolly Ranchers aren't Jolly. 
Sorry. No, a bit strange. Carry on. Uh, what yep. I have got is uh, peanut butter filled pretzel bites, which are amazing. Oh, oh yeah. I, I... That sounds like something a dog would absolutely yes. go nuts for. <laughs> yes. Salty peanut buttery goodness. Yeah. Um, Jesus, what are they doing out there? They're just smashing food together now until something happens. Like, is there any thought? Diabetes. Or is it just... Yeah, it's just uh, whack <laughs> loads of things. <laughs> Yeah, has it got sugar and salt in it? Yeah. Good job. What about this? Has this got sugar and salt in it? Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, you know make it twice as much and then sell it. Oh, okay. Yeah, excellent. Exactly. Um, so, game wise, oh, right. yeah, no, uh, four games of what the new 10th edition won before 1000, which was really fun. Um, my new. Oh, yeah. Nothing moves. Uh, no, I moved <laughs> lots because I played Blood Angels with my new Horror Terrace Blood Angels <laughs> dice, which are probably oh, broken. They they're are bent. bent. A little they're bit bent. because yeah. they're like corrupt. 13, roll because, 13 armor yeah. saves. Oh, there you go. They're all made. What? <laughs> and they're all sixes. Yeah. Oh, wait. Hold on. It's a little bit like the uh, the, the four... their dice. Their dice have always been a bit wacky, yeah, they, haven't the they? 40k GT in America. No, no, but I, I really want to hear now because I want to hear about sweaty mouth breathing nerds. <laughs> and this guy was really playing angry. Elder, which already were a bit. Well, right. that's what one. everyone yeah. says. No, I, I love yeah. it. I love, yeah. I love Eldar for the fluff. Um, yeah, exactly. All oh, right. Well, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. put it this way: my my old fifth edition Eldar uh, far seer was called Popcorn because his head kept exploding. Just pop. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. Do, 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 bang! Oh god. Um, yeah. So, grand tournament. The only thing you can't fluff or fix or tweak in any way. Uh, with the Eldar, basically at the start of the game they roll 12 dice and then that is they have those results locked in and you can pick them one, they, they've modded it now to be once a phase, to be like, oh I need to make this, right, so you just oh, go, yeah, I need yeah. I need to, I hit on threes or I hit on fives I'll pick this five up from my pool and that is my dice because I am psychic fast here, but the only, you, you can't do that on who gets to go first that, and okay. In the new edition of 40k, which I quite like, is you have a roll off and the highest score goes first. You don't get to choose. It is. See, I yeah, like that. Yeah, I don't yeah. like the cheesy. You go first. That's it. Done. Um, and it got to the round five of this tournament. And it turned out that this guy had always won this roll off and always mm. won the six. Mm. And the opponent was a bit like, I've spoken to all your previous opponents and you've won. Every roll off, it's game five, and you've rolled five sixes. This is statistically this improbable. Is, this is yeah, this is BS, and you're using those dice, which are different from all your other dice. So he got went and got the the tournament organizer. Oh the tournament organizer came over and said, "Look, we can't sit here and roll your dice lots. What we can do is we can get a salt bath." I didn't know this. This is a new thing to me. You may know, you you and the ministers may know this. If you put the dice in a salty water solution so it floats, it will, you know, if it's an, a natural balanced dice, it will, you know, rotate quite freely and stay at whatever side you put it. If mm-hmm. it's weighted, it will always come up one side or the other. Um, and to which his opponent went, excellent. Well, we don't have any salt. I'll go buy some and ran out of the tournament to go buy some salt from the shop, which, which is commitment. Oh. I love that. Like, yep. No, 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 it's because he wanted to rub it in his wounds yeah, exactly. afterwards as well. So mm-hmm. like, I'm going to get some yeah. lovely salt to add to this water. Um, and the, the player was like, no, 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 I don't think we should do this. I can't believe you're questioning my dice. Um, I'll quit. I, 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 you, could, you could win this game, and I think we should just call it that, whatever. You know, obviously a sore lose. Oh, the magic of the government. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. I'll, oh, I'll let you cheating. win. Yeah. I can't believe this. And then went to the toilet. Oh, I, I think I have heard speak on Yeah. Went to the toilet and then came out, and then the next person went to the toilet and went, "Why are there two dice at the bottom of this toilet bowl?" <laughs> this guy. Oh my god! He tried to try to dice. flush his weighted dice on a six and a one, which obviously just sank to the bottom of the bowl because they got freaking lead inside them. Just sat there. <laughs> oh my god! So the guy comes out and goes, "I think that guy just tried to flush some dice." You've got to look at your life choices. I mean, at that it's, point and it's, just, you've got to have a long, it's hard look. Haven't soldiers, you? people. I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of this is embellished. <laughs> and isn't, hopefully, hopefully, isn't true. I can't. Yeah, exactly. it is. There, there is that part of shot. So, how, how how much tar and feathering? I don't know. Because I don't know. Yeah. That's that's the story. That's at oh. least that's how I heard it. Going by a 
by oh God. standards. Yeah, d- d- you have to you have to say allegedly. Yeah, allegedly, after allegedly. You need to have them allegedly yeah, yeah. in there. Yeah, <laughs> allegedly you tried to flush the toilet, and allegedly those floaters yeah, didn't didn't. didn't it's, you know, okay, who's didn't is sink. It's floating? <laughs> yeah. You sunk my battleship. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Another great uh, YouTube clip. Um, so yeah, I have played uh, lots of 40k, 40K so with uh, my broken heresy dice. Um, and some <laughs> ETC practice games with my, and I can say it now, Italians. Woo! What a short, short Do we know yeah, that I already? Know. I, I kind of let the cat out of the okay. bag, but didn't confirm it one or the other. But yeah, dirty, horrible L L six slash forty spam. Um, some legions of Rome infantry. Uh, <laughs> Which, oh my surprisingly God. enough, have come clutching a couple of times. Right. Even though they are reluctant and green. Um, but they're hit on fours. So that's the main thing. Uh, and then two Lanciers called Mario and Luigi and a uh, three Summer Venti 90s, which are... I kind of see them like the old men in flat caps who kind of putter along and have a wicked snap with their cane. Because it's like, oh, rate of fire two, I to take 14, range 40. This is amazing. But if you move, you've got a four-inch tactical move with rate of fire one and slow firing. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. That's not great. Um, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's why they turn them into artillery. Yeah, no, pieces, exactly. They're not yeah, very exactly. mobile. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to all the KV spam that's coming my way from our... From Oh, there's so many KVs. Oh, so like, it just made me sad. Like, they are terrifying in mid-war because it's, yeah, it's right, six tigers and... rolling oh. at you. What are you going to do against that? I th- well, that's the yeah, that's the point, like, isn't it? Oh, you've got three of them. They're flamethrowers, and the other three are just... But how is I that know, fun? Like, it's a weird thing. Apparently, um, hashtag Philly Yates thinks that the speed cripples them. But again, well, the speed oh, isn't that slow. Oh, six yeah, by four exactly. table. Lee, 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 break out the crack. Yeah, <laughs> that's a big old half type right there. But it's not only that. Like you can still, they don't need to shoot. What's he yeah. on about? They just, they just yep, dash. They, oh no, I'm hit on twos. They dash, oh, I they don't dash care. and then they right. move, and then they follow assault. me, and then they assault, and then they just drive you. I mean, even win. even twenty five pounders, the greatest gun in the game, are sitting there wait, fishing for ones to bail you in defensive fire. On the side, yeah, exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you have to take made up vehicles to take out yeah, other yeah. made up vehicles, I think That's, something's wrong. Yeah. So we will see. Um, it, like, well, enjoy no, that. I, enjoy that. That's, <laughs> see, that's the thing, though. I'm unlikely to see them on the board because I have so much AT14. That's five AT14 guns in mid war. Which is ridiculous. Right. So, but t- but two of them are on things that are made yeah, up. Yeah, no, they're not. They're pretty hardy. What? Yeah, the Lancers. Yeah, no, the Lancers are. I was, I was thinking the Semaventis. Are... The Sem- they're not exactly three, sturdy, are they? Front armor four. They are hit on threes, but they don't need to be up close. They can be, be so I'm just, I'm just enjoying the irony mm. of the Italians being the anti-armor list here. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. It's 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 mid war is a bit of a strange cut of fish at the moment. Um but what I what I enjoy is the fact I and it's taken me a while to see it, but the fact that the the team part of the the ETC, the actual team element, really does come into its own in terms of how you allocate the matchups. So Yeah, I think you yeah, mentioned it last time, the whole the whole game. At first game. I thought it was and I'll be honest, I thought it was total BS because I was like, this is way too complicated. I can't understand what's going on. But as I'm taking a bit more of a part in the team this year and looking at the draw and understanding a bit more, I can see... Oh, God, you're going to end up captain. No, I'm not smart enough. It's... That, that, what's that got to do with the price well, of fish? true. Like we had Liz Truss as Prime Minister. <laughs> I mean, I... Yes, we're going to, right, we're going talking... to a sprue-based economy. Mm-hmm. Um Exactly. The geek shall inherit the uh, earth. Uh, exactly. Just just because you're you're not smart doesn't mean you don't want it. <laughs> you can't get it. Oh god. If if nothing else this year has told me anything, it's that. Anyway. Um. No. So yeah. Yeah. The, the team. Well, yeah. Exciting. There really is. I'm super. I am super excited. It's gonna be a great week. 
Uh, week. Yeah, well, we, yeah, I've got the the Wednesday off for last minute finishing slash packaging. Um, drive up on the Thursday, and then games the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and back on the Monday. So it's pretty much nearly a week. Where is it? It is in Hassel, Belgium. Belgium, the same location it was last year, yeah. um, which means super excited because we know it's a really good curry house uh, in the middle of the town. <laughs> oh, there was last God, year already. Could be so good. I do love, was last year. I do love a Just good, uh, good in- team England curry. <laughs> so you're going all the way to Belgium to eat curry? Yeah, nice it's horse. It's when it's it's yeah. it's when the curry only goes. Oh, are you guys English? And we say yes. He goes, oh, do you want actual curry or do you want European curry? And we're like, well, actual curry. Oh, he goes, excellent. And he just brings out this amazing cooked. Oh, it was just it was good. It was very good. No, you don't have him more there freaked. Um, the irony was one of our, uh, our team members did ask for does have chips with his curry instead of rice. <laughs> God. Oh my god! Um, and and so uh, it, it turned out a case that yes, um, he says, "Can we have chips?" He goes, "Normally no, but for you, we will." <laughs> oh my god! You had a chef compromising values, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because the rest of it was cooked exquisitely. Um, so no, excited about the ETC. Um, I've got half my list. I've still got because it's sixteen L sixes. Oh, I just they're just amazing little tanks. Fearless, front armor three, anti tank five, ten inch tactical. I mean the what isn't to love. And you get you know, yes, they're they they've got crap tactics unless you get the hero roll. Oh no, all those shoots and scoot moves you won't be making. <laughs> oh. Yeah, there are times when you sit there and go, I really wish I had decent tactics, but other than that, <laughs> die. Really? They are, are they? they are the ultimate are they, they are the fun? ultimate assault tank. Because you're not. Well, no, the, the Panzer One is. Well, no, because you're not there. To... The Panzer One. Yeah, but are they fearless? <laughs> they don't need to be. They're front armor eight. Ah, uh, see, wildly. you cackle the things wildly, but then you go, "Oh crap, I break off." Whereas you, your fearless, just... your six, your, your three platoons of tanks go right. I charge in. Oh, well, I kill one. Yeah, he's dead. It's, yeah. it's lost cause. Game over. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. It, I do that know. Fearless just... is just brutal. Absolutely mm-hmm. brutal. So, oh, I don't like them. They although, although, in... why are they fearless as well? You're reading, you're reading something that's essentially a spam can. Like, if that's not terrifying, I don't know. It's like with well, the flamethrower yep. one. What's the, what's the flamethrower one? Like, it's got no armor in it. It's essentially got a petrol tank lashed yep. to your body. And it's like, oh, yeah, fine. But I'm not running away. Yeah, I'm not running away. All oh, right. Cool. So, no, that is. That is oh. the, the next thing on my painting table. I should be building them right now. What, an Italian army? <laughs> well, I've got the infantry built, um, but then I sprayed them that uh, fur brown. They went a little bit shiny. There's like oh. a, bit, a bit of gloss mix in there, so I need to yeah. mat them down and then hopefully paint over the top. Be careful with that, because if it's shiny, it's slippery. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm going to put a, a matte varnish over the top and then try painting over that. And see yeah. That yeah. Yeah, I, I, that happened to me with some Wilco primer. Believe it or not, it's, it's the first time it's failed me, and it, it was really shiny and the, just paint yeah. slid off it. It was really weird. So, what's the current win rate? What's the current win record with the the army? Because now, when you had your first lot of games, obviously with sworn of secrecy about. Yeah, you, no, you, you did, had basically undefeated. I was point. undefeated. I did really well. Um, the last weekend, I played two games. It didn't go so so well, um, but it was against two KV lists. Mm-hmm. Um. And the trouble I had there... Well, it sounds like there won't be the last No, two. well, that's the thing. I, I don't think I'll see many, because I think a lot of people will go, oh, God, this actually has stuff to kill KVs. And they won't look at the rest of the list, hopefully. That's what I'm thinking. But I've just let that out of the bag now, so I don't know. If you if you fix the matchups that I play KVs, great. I can kill them in my sleep, whatever. Yeah. Um well, no, you got got good chances. Any. I mean, what else is people definitely. bringing like stukers, stukers and stuff? Yeah, exactly. um, yeah, so it was lots of wins. Obviously, I got second at the Bunningrad uh, competition with the list, and it's unchanged since then. Um, but then I got um, last weekend. I, I struggled in um, a couple of games. But I, I think that's more to do with reserves. And, and one of the things we're realising now is how important reserves are. Because 
especially in mid-war where you might have a lot of chaff, going, actually, yes, I've got seven platoons in reserve. But, you know, to get my one big bad unit on the board, but actually, what are those seven platoons doing for me? Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I don't have my mortars, if I've got a unit of mortars and he's only got one platoon of infantry, are they really going to make their points back? And the rest is armour? So, you know, tweaks and bits like that is quite interesting. Um, but then again, like you say, like well, like I said at the beginning, the the team element is quite interesting, um, especially when you've got some guy who's running Brumbars. We have a Brumbar company. Oop, we, we have, have a hero. There That's is one hero. hero. <laughs> one. I've, I've said it for years. I've said it for years. Mid-war, mid-war Brumbars. Brumbars are the way forward. Mid-war Brumbars. Why do, why do people laugh? There's nothing to laugh about. <laughs> You, you shoot and scoot, you get into the side of someone's uh, flank, you blast them with that 87 gun and you Jesus flip them over. That's all you need to do. <laughs> but yeah, I love I love a rumba. I'm I, I, unashamedly, I think that's going to do really well. Well, I want to put all my money, money on it. it. The uh, yeah. illicit betting ring. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, the black market betting on, uh, on uh, ETC games. Nice. <laughs> This this person here will call him M God. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, M Mark G. G. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, running, he's, running, he's running it out of uh, somewhere called North Holt. I don't know <laughs> what N- N- that means, but um, <laughs> Ben Holt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'll be fun. Well, hopefully, you get everything done, and you won't stress out no, too much no, about it. It's going to be fine. I mean, I'm saying that with the full full knowledge that you a will stress out about it, and b you will st- be sticking tufts like on the eleventh hour. As deploying, yeah. Well, I don't know if it'll be as deploying. Deployed. I imagine it'll be the night before. Yeah, I'm too deployed. <laughs> Just moving to my right. Move tough. this down. Oh, they've got tufts on. Right, stick, stick. There you go. Top down. On all seriousness, have you got a reasonable transport facility for them? Because that's quite a long way to be hauling. Like fragile miniatures as well. Well, I'm 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 the driver, so everything's fine. Well, that uh, hence the reason. I yeah, have. I've got a, a little case. We're all okay. good. It'll be fine. The, I, finding a solution to the sixteen L sixes. It's going to be interesting. Um, I think I, I see your sixteen L sixes, and I raise you three Nimrod companies. Well, that yeah. would that, that would do it. Yeah, but it's very very specialist solution at that point. <laughs> uh, well, it's it's only like thirty six points. That's nuts. So it's it's quite cheap. I might have undersold that, but I think it's no, it's fourteen points. I beg your pardon, it's forty two. It's fourteen points to the company. <laughs> it feels to me like the obvious answer to an L six company is a Crusader horde. <laughs> it does feel a little bit like yeah, our, the rock paper scissors Spock go. <laughs> Your Lizard. big anti-tank guns are overkill. Yep. I've got lots of little anti-tank guns to kill your little tanks. Oh, that may be, that may be a couple of lists, but then what happens if you come up against KVs? Well, I just go tally-ho um, and do nothing, because I ain't yep. versus <laughs> <laughs> I go, there's nothing I can do to kill you. That's why, guys... that's, why every, that's why the few defend their um, Crusader freeze in, just to sort of go for it, but yeah. What about, what about the Hurricane? This peasant has a lot of lifting to do, is what I'm saying. Well, the Hurricane's only, what, 88? Oh, it's the yeah. Cannon one, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, God. Good luck, kids. <laughs> what I think it's got to be Australians with sticky bombs and the captured tank card. And if you're not scared of that, <laughs> uh, I don't know what to tell you. <clears throat> that would be hilarious. I'll capture your KV-5. Thanks. <laughs> Good day. Yeah. Yeah. Good day to you. Good day to you, sir. There you go. There's an answer. This is what I said to Mark, though. Because he was like, it's not a very good answer, there, is it? I was like, no, but <laughs> in a land of no good answers, like having an answer is yeah. is something. That's the thing. Like the Stuka is not a great answer, but you've got to have something that, that keeps them honest. If you don't have something to keep them honest, then. <laughs> just gonna do whatever they want. That is a yeah, long. But I don't think a will keep anyone honest. Be, if it turns up, maybe. Oh, it, 
It's well, this is it. It's but it's four. It's veteran. It'll range in. It's eighty four top mm-hmm. armor two. So if you roll a one, it's firepower auto. So you're fishing for ones. Yeah. So I'm very much subscribing to, to to Michael Tyson thing. Everyone has a plan to get punched in the face. And it's, yeah. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> this is it. I mean, the other thing is just you could do what I always thought we should do with Thierry Henry when he was playing for Arsenal, which is you you wait for him in the car park and waffle him with a tyre iron <laughs> before the game. So, you know, you, you just take out the problem at source. You don't take it out during the game. <laughs> just maybe that's, oh, no. Oh, whatever's happened here? Oh, God. <laughs> you have fallen over onto this tyre iron 17 times. Oh, <laughs> Soccer taking lessons from figure skating, though, I see it, sir. Well, yeah, the Tonya Hardy method, yeah. <laughs> it's a proven winner. <laughs> but it is. Uh, you, you, you laugh. She won. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm not saying she held on to the medal very long, you know, very long. But... Right, so uh, meanwhile, back at the point, what were we talking about? Games. Was that was games, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was games, yeah. Uh, right, so uh, Nordic Forces next, I guess. Oh, Nordic forces then. Scandy bums. Nothing, nothing but S tanks. Game over. The end. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why we're having this discussion. It just seems moot, entirely moot. <laughs> Should we just talk <laughs> Scandy forces? Yeah. So here's, here's the formations you can take the S tank in, and uh, thanks for playing. No, 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 no. What do you mean? I'm going to re- just read the S tank specification manual for the next hour. Baton. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, in Finnish. Yeah, in fi- in sw- in Finnish. Yeah, because it's a stolen copy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's the, we got the latest Team Yankee book or the PDF of it at least, or as Ooh. I like to call it now, the only Team Yankee book. Yes. yes. <laughs> and as its title alludes to, this very much deals with the um, the Nords, as it were. Well, so. Yeah. For those, for those less ge- for more, more geographically challenged um, listeners, that's basically <coughs> Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark. Um, obviously, Norway and Denmark were in NATO. Sweden and Finland were very much um, neutral parties <laughs> in the Cold War. <laughs> Adjacent to. Yeah. Yes. You, would, you wouldn't punch a man wearing glasses parties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Finland embracing the idea of if we were, if we stay really quiet, maybe the Soviet Union will forget about us. And very, so. very quiet. Yeah. N- narrator, the Soviet Union did not forget. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, so the book the books kicks off with a normal sort of um, two pages just showing Central Europe, I and mean, then we quickly skip over that. Because <laughs> no one cares. To, yeah, yeah, we've heard yeah. about 15 times at this point. What's um, T-34 has died. No, and we get T-34 has died. Yeah. A two-page spread on basically the um, war in Scandinavia, um, and it's basically set up that obviously Russia needs to take Norway out, so basically it frees up their some, um, naval forces to go around North Cape and start getting to the Atlantic. Um, and because it wants to make things more interesting, it actually invades the two neutral parties uh, to you know get more people fighting against them, which is a yeah. Stunning military strategy. Stand, 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 but stand in Soviet yeah. protocol at this point. Uh, uh, yeah, but hold on, that sounds entirely believable. Once upon a time, you'd laugh at it, but now it's just like, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and the book sort of covers a um, basically, like I say, the initial thrust into Norway and then via Finland into Sweden to try and basically. So, do they hook around the very, 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 very top of Norway? Yeah, so they cut they cut across into Norway through the Norwegian um, Soviet border, but then to try and prevent the forces retreating, they have to then try and cut them off by cutting through um, Finland and Sweden, because that seems like the easiest, quickest way of doing that. Um, would it not made, would off, it, um, would it not made more sense just to go through Finland? Well, that's, well, yes, exactly. Well, there's okay. no real need to go into Sweden. I'm not quite sure yeah. why. <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit hazy about the whole why the Sweden bit comes in. That's right. Um, it's a good excuse to invade Gotland and do an amphibious assault onto Dem- into Copenhagen to basically capture that. So, yep, okay. But hey, as ever with the Team Yankee universe, it's just Maybe like they just, good beer. Yeah, just just roll with the just roll the background. It's really about the lists, and you can make your own background from there, which is generally what I try and do in my head. Does so, it have My um, Little Ponies? <laughs> Warlord's next um, big license. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> underrated role play game. I've written back, Alessio. <laughs> 
Um, yes, yeah, so the first one we get to is Finland, um, which obviously is a crowd favourite, um, especially with the wife. <laughs> Being that fish. Um, and obviously, the thing we've been looking for with Finland is uh, basically Warsaw Pact gear with NATO stats. Yeah. And the book really Ooh. leans into that. Um, which is nice. Yeah. So we get a little bit of a background of, like, say, the initial invasion and fighting fighting in the various forests and that make up Finland. Forests and swamps, the, right? Yeah, forests and swamps. Forests. Yeah, swampy forests. I'm. So, where's my Where's my hovercraft? Should the hovercraft not have been here for the Soviets? Oh, that's, that's the thing. I was going to bring come up with the things that he missed out. It's, oh, okay. There's an opportunity here to do Soviet naval infantry. The book and the book doesn't do it. It's just purely the NATO, their um, sort of NATO aligned forces. So I'm still holding out a vain hope we might see naval infantry in, on some future book. But I'm starting you're to holding, lose. You're it. holding a big vain hope. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Um, so we get to the force diagram. Uh, three tank formations. Basically, two flavors of T-72 and the T-55s. Two infantry formations, BMP, mounted infantry, and BTR, mounted infantry. And then we get a whole heap of the old um, support. They get um, two artillery boxes, um, one that could basically be gut, like tube, tube artillery and rocket artillery, basically. Um, AA in two flavors, gun artillery and man pads. We get a recce platoon, act tank platoon, some lane. This is my, my other pet hate book on the air support. It's everything's basically Vigans because apparently having Drakens and F 16s in is too much to hope for. Well, you can use the models, just use the stats, right? Exactly, yeah. So it gets that thing if, you, if you're doing this properly, you wouldn't have aircraft names, you just have effects like an anti tank effect and a plus bomb effect, but that doesn't sell models. Um, <laughs> And then you have a, a break off, basically, much like how in Free Nations you used to have, um, like Canadians had German support built in. Yeah. You, in this book, we see all the way through. Basically, um, each of these nations has a built has a built in Allied support. For the Finns, that's the Swedes, and they get access to a Swedish tank platoon, either S tanks or Centurions. No, sorry, what was the second thing? <laughs> okay, it's gonna be a consistent theme, guys. Um, you get an infantry the infantry platoon. Uh, anti-aircraft platoon, which is kind of redundant to get playing anti-aircraft in the, in the run finish list anyway. But also you get um, their helicopters because um, the Finns don't have their own attack helicopters. All right. And you, and you also get the um, NATO allied formation if you want that as well. Can, can I ask a serious question? Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know anything about the Finns. Um, and that's my ignorance. But what, what was the reasoning for the Soviets selling them like export versions of their own kit when they're next door? So basically, I did, post-war the Finns go through this thing called um, finification, basically, which is they basically they were trying to play nicely with um, the USSR, um, knowing that you know, they, they, yes, they could probably hold them to a standstill and sue for peace, but they lose territory doing it after, as they learned through World War Two. You wouldn't hit a man with glasses, would you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so they were very keen to basically not be seen to be favouring. Um, yes, certainly right. the Americans, um, but buying Swedish gear was generally okay, okay. And they bought some British gear as well. They bought Hawks and the Marksman, as we can see, as we get in later. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's very much to. Yes, we're covering our borders against you, but we're not going to be. You know, we're not going to join sides. And if you don't bother us, we won't bother you. Kind of attitude. Gotcha. Okay, well, that makes more sense now. Yeah. And so, and so, to uh, to encourage them not to buy other people's gear, they're, they're obviously a Soviet sold them like you know the downgraded versions of their own gear, yeah. which obviously they knew they'd have better gear going against it because you know their T seventy twos be better. Not expecting the Finns to basically go around and go, nice T seventy two, be better with um, a Western fire control system and that kind of thing on it. Yeah. As we see, segue into um, the T seventy two FM one. So basically, the Finns take a T seventy two M, as you get in the Czech list, the Polish list, the Iraqi list. They take that as a starting point, add in a NATO for, uh, like a NATO standard thermal engine system, a modern fire control system. So its um, range goes from f- normal thirty two to forty inches. Nice. 
and also new ammunition. So it's eight tank goes from twenty one to twenty two. Just interesting thing. Did you you know like they obviously had this thing with low um, silhouette tanks, didn't they? And there was a direct correlation between the height of a tank and um, its le- what well, lethality of being shot. Um, the FN two was it, it wasn't quite as low as the T sixty two, but it was only two meters tall. Two, yeah, it's two point so, two meters. Whereas the S tank was two point four three, and you think the S tank's quite low. <laughs> this is lower. But I mean, the Soviets were good at making compact tanks. I mean, yeah. they did it by sacrificing crew ergonomics to a large degree. But you, but you look at any of their tanks compared to a NATO tank, and they look tiny. You know, they that's are astonishing. That's much that's, smaller. That's barely the same height as me to the, mm-hmm. to the AA mount. I mean, that's insane. Yeah, exactly that. Um, and so yeah, so basically, so in there they take so to feel that you have basically two platoons of T-72s that are mandatory. And you think mm-hmm. they come and use a free and can be upgraded with mine clearing devices. You then get a third box, which can be any of the three flavors of tank the Finns have. Is that so, the first uh, mine clearing option you have as a NATO or not NATO? As in correct, yeah. yeah as as, as well, so we're not obviously Finns aren't NATO, but as far as Team Yankee is concerned, they are very much a NATO aligned force. Yeah, because you're not had um, any option for anything like that before, have we? No. Because mm. uh, it's always been the funny thing about when they, when they're um, for hurricane comes in for the Soviets having the minelets. Yeah. Obviously, that would cause havoc with NATO because none of the NATO tanks have a mine clearing device. <laughs> but um, yeah, obviously these would have that as a counter. And the formations also got an infantry box, which can be the BMP infantry or the BTI infantry. We've got inbuilt artillery, the carnations, which is always handy. Um, as we get into later, those carnations basically have you know our skill free plus, so they go ranging fairly reliably. <laughs> which makes good, them very good carnations, yeah. Good carnations, yeah. Um, and then interestingly, you get an anti aircraft box with the old CSU 57, which isn't that great against um, attack, helic- um, against strike aircraft, but it's perfectly adequate versus helicopters. Mm-hmm. The penalty only counts against fixed wing aircraft. Uh, and when you have nothing else, you know, absolutely, yeah, it's cheap. Yeah, and these things, and that's the thing, these are cheap. Like, um, a platoon of three T72s is 15 points. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's pretty cheap, and they they they're good as well, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, exactly. Hit on fours, um, skill three plus, fearless. Um, so morale and remount is three plus as well. You know, these guys will blitz. They'll shoot and skill. They will follow me, um, and they will. You know, it's got all the mobility of a T seventy two, but backed up by his forty inch range. So you can just sit back and you know, tank snipe. <laughs> now. As we get on to, the real strength of the things is their infantry. I'm, no, I'm not entirely convinced you ever going to take a pure Finnish artillery list. Um, sorry, armour list. You might take a, this is a small formation, the backup an infantry formation. But the actual tanks are still pretty strong in their own right. They're just limited by the fact they're rate of fire one because of their um, nature of being a Soviet-based system. Uh, next formation is a kind of a hypothetical one. The Finns had an intention to upgrade the T-72 further with era armour. Never happened in real life because the Cold War ends and they can go buy Gucci West German uh, <laughs> knock, down, knock, knock down sale Leopard 2 tanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because you know, the Finns like buying German kit, apparently. It's a, it's a thing they can't get away from. <laughs> um, but basically what they do is you basically take that T-72 we've just been talking about, you put the era on, now, because you're starting with a lower armor basis, it's not quite as good as a T-72B. It's only front armor 17, side armor 8, rather than 18 and 9. Mm. You, still get, you still get an era save against heat rounds. Nice. And it's not a huge jump in points either. Um, it's basically one point, almost not quite one point a tank. It's a, bit, a little bit more expensive than one point, one point a tank more. But obviously, it gives you that ability to sit back and shoot a range and just have their, um, you know, kind of try and bounce a few anti tank rounds. And um, no gun missiles. No gun missiles, no. They didn't get. They, the Russians weren't being that charitable. Okay. <laughs> that would have been nice. Hmm. And finally, I should say all these formations are the same, basically, it just swaps out what tank is the main tank and the mandatory tank. Fire was T 55. Again, these have been upgraded, so they still have the 40-inch range. But 
and they have their better anti tank of anti tank nineteen, which is pretty good for a T at fifty five. Yeah. Um, they've got a stunning range actually. When you look at the range of the actual yeah. operational range, it's three hundred twenty five kilometers. Mm-hmm. I mean, the S the S tank's three ninety, but you know, three twenty five still that's a long way that from operating in Russia. That means you're basically across the border and away, aren't you? Yeah, pretty much. I just try and get you just try and squeeze as many facts as possible in now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've done my research. I've looked at things. It's like, good. Yeah, I'm I've impressed. But I was just thinking about it because because these are like 1960s tanks, right? Well, 1950s, yeah. 1950s tanks. But when you're actually fighting up in 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 the Scandinavian forests and stuff like that, they're perfectly you know perfectly capable, aren't they? If you're playing a pro, if you are playing a proper 1985 game and you and the Soviets are using the kit that the Northern Front would have used. Yeah. They were they weren't assigned all the Gucci tanks. They would be very much be um infantry mounting MTLBs, which unfortunately can't do the exit on the book. Um and backed up by, you know, these second grade tanks like the T fifty five and T sixty two. Well third grade really, isn't it? It's third yeah. line almost. You'd have yeah. you'd be having Soviet naval infantry landing along the Norwegian border, or their um, you know, or, the, or come off the Gulf of Finland, and they'd be coming in again with T-55s, albeit with um, you no know, drost um, active armor. Yeah. But um, yeah, so a T-55 with upgrade ammo because ain't tank nineteen with this Belgian ammo. That's what I mean, that's pretty. That's pretty tasty, it's, isn't it? It'd be good enough against historical forces you fight. Now, if you're taking these to an open tournament, that's going to struggle because you're going to be facing. TATs and Abrams, all kinds of stuff. But yeah, of what it was facing, it's absolutely perfect, and it's just, and it's super cheap. I mean, even being hit on four plus, even being fearless veteran, it's still only seven points for free tanks. Yeah, you it's can have a maxed up formation. Yeah, you can have a maxed out formation of these guys, and stuff. All the points left to do the next thing, which is the infantry. Eddie, this is the T-34s from Fate of a Nation. I'm just warning you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically you can say... Here you only get three per two, not 30. Yeah, that's true. Mm. But actually, this is more like the Israelis with the captured, was it, T-55s? The Tarans. Yeah, Tarans. Yeah, Tarans. Yeah. Rio. Yeah. So I'm not going to pretend like to say that armour is a strength of the Finns, but it's... Not a downside either. It's good. It's a good. They're good, all good support tanks to support them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you back them up with some S tanks from, from their like, so allied, allied support, which we'll get into a bit later. Or the Centurion, and yeah. But main the main show is the infantry. Very much it is in Flames of War. These guys are rocking up, hit on fours. Fearless veteran. I mean, they're, they're a conscript army, but obviously they really drilled the conscripts. They had a professional corps, so they get a bit like the West Germans. They're actually, you know, a conscript force. It gets statted more like a veteran force. Mm-hmm. Um, MG teams rocking up with, like, disposable law launchers as well. You get six of them and three BMPs um, or BMP-2s. And you can upgrade those guys to have Appalas missiles, the French um, disposable rocket, which boosts their anti-tank from 12 to 21, all the 16-inch range, which is a pretty mm. tasty upgrade. Um, again, relatively cheap. I mean, it's not a big platoon, six teams and three BMPs. And it comes at six points for the BMPs. Yeah. Yeah, that 76 mil gun's quite handy, isn't it, on the, uh, on the BMP yeah. one as well? I mean, it's not 100 mil or 105, is it? But like the yeah. S tank's got, but it's uh, it's definitely, it's definitely handy. The, but it's kind of showing its age, though. Here, isn't it? Like when you uh, compare it to the other options that you've got coming out on the Western forces. Yeah, because I mean, they had upgraded missile to the um, away from the 83 to the 84, but um, even the 84 is still only eight tank 19. There's oh, no true. function. It's there's no the functional. Dragon. Yeah. yeah. But it's, Compared to the 83 the Soviets have on their BMP-1s, basically the, the main difference is you, your minimum range is only 8, not 16, which obviously makes it far more functionally useful. <laughs> yeah. But the actual formation, like I say, you've got BMP-HQ. Um, that has to be BMP-1. You've got one mandatory BMP-1 platoon, and an optional BMP-1 platoon, and then the, the second 
nitric box can either be BMP1s or BMP2s. Then you've got um, an armor box, which can be, like I say, there are um, any of the free flavors that armor we covered. We get all the cool stuff in the formation. I love this. You get a recordless rifle platoon, <laughs> with, um, and we'll get into these in a minute because these are brilliant. You get two mortar boxes, one for 81s and one for 120s. So you're not sure of on call artillery with these guys. And that's ground mount stuff, right? It is, yeah. And also, you've got a built in man pad platoon. So, again, you've got plenty of um, on tap anti aircraft. So, it's good. It's a good, well run formation. Um, the mortar platoons, they both come in BTRs and they both come in threes or twos. Unlike the Soviet ones in the um, BM in the BM in the Red Dawn box, these are actually singly mounted. They're not like multiples to a base, which is great. I was, I was worried that it's going to be a thing. Who? That's weird. Um, yeah. Stat wise, interestingly, they're both about the same in range. Both are six inches between the eighty-one and the one hundred and twenty. Um, the eighty-one millimeter mortars can move quicker over ground. They move like infantry teams, whereas the one twenty is a bit slower. Um, but they're both infantry units. They both have a three plus save, and they can obviously both be on the ground, you know, concealed in the open, that kind of thing. Um, obviously, you get a big. You get the main difference between them is the eight tank firepower. So the eighty ones are eight tank one and firepower four. The one twenties eight tank three, firepower three. But you can have both of them. They both got smoke. I mean, um, they're not both breaking cheap. the bank, are they? No. I mean, the fact you can get a BTR-60 with it as well, they kind of come with their own defence. Yeah. Um, so you're not going to get overrun with infantry necessarily. And the BTR can go anti-helicopter as well. It's machine gun as well. Oh, of course so. it can. Yeah, it can. So you get quite a little, you know, a little bit of self-protection in there. Um, the recordless rifle, I love this unit. So it's basically free, free anti-tank um, recordless rifles, 95 millimeter ones, basically. Mm-hmm. They're anti tank 18 in range 24. Brutal, um, heat, and also, like I say, these are your sort of the first g- proper barrel gun teams we've seen in the game. I was about to right. ask that. I was like, yeah. Yeah. wait a minute, what? This is Team Yankee, right? This isn't Flames of War. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, these, and these guys are basically designed so they can run around in the forest because they're maybe man portable to, like, to the point where they can actually pick it up if they need to and move it. That's a four inch tactical move. Yeah. Yep. With a six, six inch plus, yeah, but, it, three, but it's it's still a gun team though, Eddie. So no shooting and scooting and yeah, huh? No, it's not. No, it's still shooting. You can shoot and scoot <gasps> with them. There is no what? gun teams in flames in uh, Team Yankee, bro. Not so oh, far. Everything is yeah, it's very much infantry. Um, it's an infantry with three up cross. They are heavy weapons. Well, so you can't be. assault with them or anything like that. Oh but... no! <laughs> so you can't fix a but... bayonet to the front of your recorder's rifle. No, you can. That's why it's got a sort five plus, but. Oh. <laughs> But another little crazy thing with this is so you've got, you got the three BTRs, like each one towing one of these things, but you can add two Appalas teams. So you can back up those um, rate of fire two 24 inch shots with these little rate of fire one um, anti tank teams. No, we're anti tank 21. Better, better anti tank the gun itself, actually. Well, that, that's but... funny. Is that what are they? The recordless is firing and then the Appalas is firing and the recordless is then shouting, Yeah, I got it. Yeah. And you're like, Oh, I don't think you did, mate. I love these guys as, as an as an ambush unit. Yeah, you just put these in, put these in one of the Appalachian units, ambush them out, fire a short range volley, and then shoot and scoot away. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's that's a bit un, um, unfriendly. <laughs> and even this Appalachian is still only a six point unit. It's dirt cheap. Jeez, a six point. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the other option is the BTR. Now, normally, I'd go I go BMP, why bother the BTR? But I think the BTR is better, this one. The actual formation's the same. You've still got um, the two military units, um, an optional third BTR platoon, Yama, eight tank guns, mortars, all that's the same. The big difference is the platoons are much bigger. So rather than just being six MG teams, you get seven MG teams, plus two um, RPG teams, effectively. And four BTRs. It's a much bigger lump for only a small amount more, a small amount more of points. And given the strength of the things, is this infantry? And yeah. having more of them seems to be the way to go. Mm. You can yeah, also take. Well, 
Yeah, on a point by point basis. He goes mm. to take the RPGs and replace them with Appalas missiles. <laughs> so they got, again, you, get in, you go from being um, 8 tank 14 firepower 5 to being 8 tank 21 firepower 3. Yes, That's please. auto include. Yeah. Right, oh, yeah, at one gets, point each. It gets yeah. expensive, though, doesn't it? it well, big. it's a 10 point, a 10 point unit once you're fully upgraded, which, again, doesn't seem mm. that bad. For seven stands of a tree, two of those missiles, and four transports. <sighs> oh, yes, please. Yeah, I mean, it's the first time I actually thought about buying BTRs. It's, uh... <laughs> oh, my God. Well, the, the, the they weren't desert was... coloured. Yeah. So the other thing, Lee, is that the BTR's got eight wheels. Yep. S Tank's got no wheels. I'm just saying. <laughs> that's another thing in its favour. It's not competing yep. on the same. Uh, it's definitely a fact. It's definitely fact a fact. Like Gosling. Exactly. Gosling the, facts. Uh, this reading is extensive and mostly involving Wikipedia. <laughs> um, I think the only thing, only thing to note with the Finns, actually, I haven't picked up so far, is bizarrely, they're only Assault 4 Plus, not Assault 3 Plus. Now, given they're armed with AK-47, basically, I was kind of surprised they're only fours rather than threes. But, um, but you know, the counter tank is also only four plus. Not hang, no. Yeah. It's a yeah, little weird because with the thing, the thing, thing like fin, fins, but they're all punchy and not going to give up ground. Whereas these ones will. Yeah, obviously a bit more tactical now. Is it is it a conscription thing? Maybe. Yeah, that's, that's, that's potentially that could be it. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, so support units, you've got hails, you have up to six of those in the battery. I'm not a big fan of hails, but at least you've got lots of them. They just get expensive really quickly. That, that, that is true. Cream, maybe. Mm. Well, and the other thing is, I mean, hail, you know, it means hailstorm, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the, do you know what the S what stands for in, in S tank? Sturm? No, it's a uh, Strigger's wagon, which literally means combat wagon. Oh, you're going. Yeah. <laughs> you gave Duncan Google. Um, yeah. um, the, it's just, the point with the hell is though, they are skill three plus. Yeah. Uh, so at least you're going to range in. Yeah. Um, but the thing um, is, they're all the four- cheap as well. They're, they're cheap saturation rocketry. Uh, I mean, I mean, they are. You've got all, but you've got all those mortar platoons in the infantry. And let's face it, you're taking infantry formations in core formation. Yeah. Do you've you got the carnations. I think I think they're trying to find a role which which with this army is always going to have three or two units, two mortar units, and the carnations. Mm. Plus the OP, OP is mandatory at this point. <laughs> mm. But you have to have a carnation to get the OP. The mortar units don't trigger the requirement. Um, marksman's in here, so this is a good marksman that actually existed. Um, they basically bought a bunch in the, ni- in the 90s to upgrade, and they took some. T- uh, T55 chassis and basically whack this um, monstrosity of a turret on the top. It's huge. It is huge. It's, just, <laughs> it's actually insane. It takes all the um, the upside of being a low silhouette mm-hmm. and it, it just replaces it yeah. with a battleship yeah. turret. Exactly. But it's just... I mean, it's almost three times more expensive than the ZSC-57. It's got a better range, marginally, a much better rate of fire. A better at your tank, not that comes up a lot. Um, no. Has radar, so it's better against fixed wing aircraft. But um, you know, the other yeah. problem is there's only seven of them, only seven were produced. Now, had that been an S tank, there'd have been two hundred ninety. But there's only seven, so you need to be careful about including them. I think this is like this is like reading back one of my GCSE history reports. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I've already got that because it's two thousand words, and I put my middle name in at the top <laughs> just to get it up to three. Uh, classic one. Yeah, make it make it middle name if you haven't already got one. Exactly. Um, so, eight aircraft missile platoons is basically two stands and a BTR. It's keep it away from any kind of fire because even with the free being fearless, it's going to run sooner or later if you lose a stand, which is annoying. Mm-hmm. But um, re- yeah. yeah, but it's basically the same as a Soviet manpad team. So, range forty eight. Rate of, fire, rate of fire free. It's all typical stuff. Now, eight tank platoon. This is this is a really cool one. So, m- tow missile, not mounted to a vehicle, but actually on its tripod. Yeah. So this is an infantry team. Um, we can fire basically fire rate of fire one missile. You have four of those, and they ride around in two BMP twos, which have its <laughs> own eight tank twenty one missile. What? So you got like yes, six please. eight tank 
Six, eight, ten, twenty-one shots each turn from these things. Oh, but and how many points does that come in, Lee? Six points. It's super cheap. Yeah. So you take this card mm-hmm. and you say you put it to your finish formation and you say, I'm going to bring these. Yes, yeah. they are nice. Yeah, and like I say, being being man man portable, they actually they can move around. They've got a uh, tactical eight inch. They can't move and shoot, obviously, being a missile. Yeah. But you are skill three plus, so you can blitz. always blitz if you need to. Yep. But I do like the idea of trying to blitz with a tow missile, move it around, drop it down, <laughs> line you it back up. You don't want to be late <laughs> on that party, do you? No. Um, and then the last one is a BMP2 Recce Platoon. Um, so again, three more BMP2s. And again, all, all, all to include, because at the very least, that's three more anti tank 21 missile shots you've got. From, um... <laughs> and, the, and it's got the obligatory scout. Yeah, well. scout and spearhead. Yeah. On a hit on four plus. So those things can be sneaky. So, yeah, I'm. I was impressed how much I actually liked the fins after going through it. So are can... you Are you really going to do fins? Because the next section is painting guide, and that camo doesn't doesn't make me feel happy. I don't know. I think I think it's just basically a bunch of smudges. I think that'd be fairly easy to accomplish. Bunch of I, smudges. I, I I I can see a finished force in my future at some point. I'm just I'm just putting it out there. Interesting. Well, you must have some spare Russian kit left over. Surely. I got the BMPs for sure. Yep. All you need to do now is buy about four boxes of BTRs for the infantry, buy the infantry, all that sort of thing. Probably need to choose which tank I'm going to go with. I think probably t- their um, T55. Oh, well, so well, so do do you, you buy some more of those. I think you go T72 and then you have a T55 formation. Well, wait, oh, I see. I have the T72 platoon in the infantry. Yeah, to give you sort of like a long range snipery type. I like the thinking. Yeah, yeah that's, that's got potential. Because they're not expensive, and it gives you something else to just... It's another information unit that doesn't have to do anything very much. You can just yep. lurk. I, I like certainly... Mm. There's... The option here is you go with a Finnish infantry force. This is something that um, Lexi was talking about when we did our little thing the other day on time of day. Is um, going with the Finnish infantry and backing it up with Swedish armour. See, I think that's heretical, and I don't think that should be encouraged. <laughs> you get some more S-tanks in there. No, that bit's fine, but you shouldn't be crossing the streams. <laughs> but you never cross the streams. Yeah. Bad things happen. Yeah, but obviously, we, like I say, the next thing we get is the painting guide. Interestingly, the actual catalogue pages are split, so each nation's catalogue page follows its um, list, basically. Essentially, they're four mini-books, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Mm. I, that confused me to start with. I was like, oh, what's the rest of it? What's happened here? Yeah, and so you basically got... Um, no new models on the armor wise, it just reuses the existing Soviet boxes. Still no plastic carnation, even though it's so obvious. I'm not sure why they haven't done it yet. Yeah, they're waiting for the MTB chassis, I reckon. Uh, well, unfortunately, it's a stretched MTLB chassis, so it wouldn't quite oh, work. Is it? Oh. Yeah, they used it for the MTLBU later. Um, but you do get metal infantry. Yep. So you got. Yeah, infantry platoon does both the BMP or the BTR. So you basically got surplus stands for doing BMP infantry. You've got all um, a weapons platoon which has the recoilless rifles, the toes, and one lot of the um, man pads in, which is fine. Except for if you want to do the extra man pads, you get both in the formation and the force. You don't get enough. You have to. You can't really buy another one of these boxes because we'll just end up with a bunch of extra guns you don't need. So, well, if they'll do that as a direct order, where you can just buy, hopefully, buy it's, yeah. you know, three extra figures type thing. I mean, it's great for, if you're starting off. You'll get all, these, all the stuff you need for one formation, basically, and their um, tow missiles in support. That's what they did with the Hungarian stuff for mid-war. Yeah. You and they get a mortar, yeah. a mortar group that has both the 120s and the 81s in as well. That's quite nice, because you're going to want both those as well, aren't you? Yep. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure with the marksman whether it's a plastic hole and then the resin turret, or if it's just going to be an entirely resin model, there's no obvious clue as to which way I've gone with it. I, I was to say, I think you'll know when you see the price point. Yeah. Um, okay, up next is Swedes, which I know, Yay. obviously, Duncan's dying to cover. <laughs> I don't, um, there's only limited bits I want to talk about. It's a very it's a very compact force. Like you've only got three formations, two tank and one infantry. Well, they, they weren't huge. They didn't have huge formations, period. They didn't no, have no. tons of manpower on this, and they didn't have a ton of uh, armoured assets either. Absolutely not, no. Um, 
when we look at when we look at the special rules to get in, we got auto loader, which obviously we ex- we know from um, the Diana, yeah, and those are the MX. Oh, deli- at- delicious! Yeah, accurate for um, the sort of like guns with the spot and fart rifles. Yeah, we have a new rule: ambush tank for the S tank. Yes. So if it's stationary, which is a big caveat here, a yes. teaming ambush tank rule can remain on the ground while shooting its main gun. Mm. Yeah, so you can't Delicious. move and fire with it, but if you're sitting still, you can pop up in your little pneumatic suspension, hydro, sorry, hydro, hydraulic suspension, and just. Do you know? Do you know? I was trying to send you guys this earlier, and I couldn't work out how to do it because it was a Reddit, a video on Reddit. But there's actually um, footage of a S tank digging itself in. Yeah, you, sent, you just sent it to me. Yeah, I, I, I got it. it. Yeah. yeah, how fantastic is that? Yeah, you can just about see it on so on page forty two in the side view. You can just about see the bulldozer blade tucked in under the body. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they started off having one tank per troop with that blade. When they get to the C upgrade, um, they added it to all the tanks because what they worked out is effectively it's an extra bit of spaced arm on the glasses plate, lower glasses <laughs> plate. Yeah. And because um, it can depress completely to the ground level, yeah. it bulldozes essentially a, a sand or a, an earth berm in front of it. So it, mm-hmm. it, it can drive along and dig itself in at the same time. Yeah. It's absolutely phenomenal. And phenomenal. One of the cool things is when you actually on, the, on that page 42, they actually sell separate tracks with it um, inclined. So it's like gone hold down on the bank. Yes. <laughs> so the, the, the track, the treads in the actual box are just standard, like it's rolling along, but you can buy extra treads if you want. Yes, yeah, I do. Yes, you do. Are we, are we on. nothing but S tanks? If it's only the S tanks, yeah. Yep. And no, um, no, I mean, are we we could have we could have a tournament where everyone just turns up with S tanks. Yes, oh. <laughs> I don't see a problem with this. Um, but unfortunately, also in the special rules, but it's overworked, which the S tank suffers from, oh, and no. slat armor, which gives it basically a tank thirteen versus heat rounds on the front side. Because it's got all of its fuel <laughs> strapped to the side of the jerry cans. Because <laughs> diesel's not flammable, yeah. No. <laughs> Another genius invention, uh, see? Yeah, well, I mean, Russia's still up with the BMP doors as well, which is always feels a bit... Um, yeah, I know it's not flammable, but still, I can't help but feel the fuel tank on the door is not the... It's not the right move. <laughs> so the rest of the force, like I say, we've got two tank formations and infantry formation. We've got only one artillery box, which I think is the big issue I have with the Swedes, is they have very little artillery support. Oh, but what an artillery box. I mean, it's brilliant. Yeah, the, little, the band cannon, which is an auto-loading 155mm gun. It's got two clips of seven rounds. Someone say NATO, NATO Dana. Yeah, yeah, NATO Dana, basically, yeah. Well, essentially, like, like, yeah, two, two, seven, two clips of seven rounds, which you could fire off in under a minute, I think it is. Yeah. And then it takes two minutes to reload. With the, it's got its own little like um, Sturm Tiger Hoist winch. Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely amazing. To, when you see one of these firing, it's bonkers. Mm-hmm. They got OP. Um, they got two anti-aircraft missile platoons. They're, no artillery. It's purely missile teams. So it's um, you got two platoons of those to make up for that. Um, two helicopter platoons. So you can do. You can go two and two or four and four. With uh, it's basically like um, a par for the West Germans but with toes yeah. with hot missiles. Not the highlight of the list, I'm going to be honest. No, which is not what you want to see, actually. You no. want to see the hot missile because it's just better. Exactly. You've got the Vigans, as you expect, and they're appearing everywhere in this book. Um, Riddle with you, Vigans, yeah. And you, then you get um, three units which appear in the infantry formation, but also appear as like brigade support, basically. Um, the IKV-91 yes. tracked anti-tank gun, so it's basically a 90mm on an armoured chassis. You've got the PBV-302 Armoured Recon Platoon, which is basically the APC being used as a cavalry scout. And then you've got a, a missile anti-tank platoon, which kind of would be the jeep-mounted anti-tank guns or the um, APC, sorry, not APC, the track chassis-mounted um, tow missile. Right, S-tanks. Here, you, I'll let you do this one, Duncan. No, 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 you carry on. You carry on. I, I'll, I'll just chip in. Okay. So, firstly... Um, First thing there is HQ, not just one tank or two tanks, but the option of two tanks or three tanks in the three HQ. Three tanks! So yep. you can yeah really fill out that platoon if you want to. You then get two compulsory platoons of S tanks, an optional fur platoon of S tanks, and then interestingly, two optional rifle platoons. Not just one, you've got two Ooh. optional rifle platoons. Yeah. And then you've got uh, finally, finally a recon platoon. Um, S tank itself, 
it's basically its main gain is its gun. Its gun is brilliant. It's basically a one a, a long barrel one hundred five. <laughs> it's all the so one hundred five you can possibly handle. It gets yeah. every last ounce of performance out out, out of the one hundred five. Yeah. It's eighty tank twenty one. Which is rather, <laughs> just, rather just being nineteen or eighteen, which is crackers. It's the same as the um, smooth, wait, no, smooth bore rifle one twenty. Can't remember mm-hmm. which. Yeah, it's basically the same as like the um, downgraded um, one twenty fives on the export T twenty twos. Range forty eight. It's the longest leg so far on the gun this game. <laughs> yep. Um, brutal. Obviously, the the um, Swedes obviously like the Hesh round. Mm-hmm. Um, forward firing, which obviously you expect from a whole mounted gun. Yeah, it's yep. not too bad. Laser range finder, which again makes most of that 48 inch range. But no plus one for over 16, is that right? <coughs> Correct. Yep. However, it is overworked, but it does have, does have a smoke round. Is, um, is that a record of having five special rules for one stat line? It Quite might possibly. be, actually. I'm just trying to think of anything else. Does anything else have five special rules? Brutal, so mm-hmm. brutal, forward firing, laser range fire. Range fighter overworked and smoke. That's five special rules for one weapon. Yeah. Right now, com- now <laughs> you know of any other weapon. Combined with being rate of fire one on the move, the overwork feels a little harsh because it's an auto loading gun. You've got a dedicated commander. The gunner is a driver, but you need to do it with a whole mount gun anyway. I'm not quite sure why it had to be overworked. It feels a little bit mean. I think because it's not I think the overworked is there to balance the ambush tank rule. Yeah, but the problem the problem you got is that when you look at the rest of the stats of the tank, yeah, its mobility it's speed wise is good, but it's only yeah. cross four plus. Yeah, that's the problem. Correct. I don't again. I don't understand why it's a cross four plus because it's you know, ground pressure was good. Yes, it's a bit nose heavy with a gun, but the but I, I'm not even sure the, it was nose where heavy. Is, where right. is the driver? About towards the back. So you haven't got much of a view over the nose, I guess, but it feels mm. a little harsh to make it four plus for that. Well, I don't, I don't actually know that because one of my one of my stats actually I'm going to say it now is for the leopard, but um, they ran some tests against the leopard one, and um, the S tank was able to uh, acquire and fire at a target buttoned up faster than a leopard could. Yeah, <laughs> I think the American. Um, so again, the Americans assessed it at Aberdeen proving grounds and had much the same result against the M60. Now, this is the early M60 with no stabilizer. Yeah, but they found. It could still acquire targets on the move faster and prosecute faster than the M60 could, which is crackers. Mm. Absolutely, but crackers. it cannot fire while moving. No, but it goes. It just, you just fire from a short halt. So move, yeah. stop, shoot, but, no, move. I, I get that. Yeah. But I mean, other tanks are rate of fire one when moving. So oh, yeah, most tanks, yeah. Yeah, yeah, most tanks in Team Make Universe are, are movement two. Only the stuff like the Chieftain, which is a very clumsy fire control system, a rate of fire one on the on the on the move. Yeah, it's quite it's, rare to be. Yeah, dropped that's down. true. I mean, it is what it is. It, it was designed to you know to shoot and then bugger off because it's mm. again one of my stats is that it's a, it's got two and two gears forward, two gears back. Yep. And it's as quick. It does thirty eight miles an hour backwards. Yeah, helped by the fact that the um, which isn't again although, it, yeah, but doesn't it doesn't need a loader? But they quickly found out a third crewman helped split the task of the of yeah. the um, commander with radio and that kind of thing. So they mapped him backwards, so he could also drive backwards. So the tank oh. can drive just quickly backwards and just easily. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, armor wise. I mean, obviously, this is, is very, this is very much a nineteen fifties tank. Um, the armor twelve is very much. There or thereabouts. Yeah, so but yes, it's an incredible service because it, it came into service in the late fifties, early no sixties, no fifties. It was fifty six. Yes, fifties. Yeah, yeah, fifty six. It came into service and it served all the way up till the uh, turn of the century. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it's very very sloped, but it's not particularly thick because it's sloped. It kind of makes up for it. Yeah, but, but that amb- trick only works against doesn't really work against plunging fire. Am- ambush tank is my armor. Yeah, what's well, it? Yeah, ambush I mean, tank and cover. You'll hit on fours, fires are concealed, and if you can stay on the ground, sixes. And that's yep. it. But you stay on the ground while shooting, so... Eh. Mm-hmm. As long as you don't move. But you're also amphibious, Eddie, just in case. So you can go... Go. Uh, uh, can you go gone to ground in water? <laughs> <laughs> I don't... Well, maybe. If you don't think so. I don't think, water yeah. does pro- I don't think water provides concealment. Um, yeah, so... so 
my only concern with this tank is it feels like it's a very good tank on the defence, but you can't go on defence because armour's too high, so deep defence will really screw you. You shut your dirty mouth. I just feel like the next tank's better, which is the um, Centurion. You I'm shut your dirty next. mouth. I'm not so saying because it's a Centurion. I'm just saying it's, it feels like a much better yeah, all round tank. Yes, tanks are five points each. Centurions are three points each. Yeah, but they're also three tank. meters tall. Yeah, but who cares? Well, I do. <coughs> the S tanks only two point four meters tall. They aren't. They aren't S tank flat. Yeah, mm-hmm. flat Panzers. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So Centurions basically the same formation. Um, so again, you have up to three tanks in the HQ, and again you've got the two mantry boxes and one optional box. Now, as far as insurance go, this is tricked out. So <laughs> it's got <laughs> end of development. <laughs> yeah. Is, yeah. Nothing, nothing this has got that TS tank hasn't is any kind of night fighting capability because this has got infrared, which where apparently the S tank has no night fighting capability, which I cannot believe is actually a real case. Oh, yeah. I don't think that's the case. Right, hold on. Maybe that didn't come until the later ones. Or maybe. But this feels really weird. It's, they're. Um, no, but they, they they probably put an infrared on the on the centurion. No, thought they put it on the S tank. Um, obviously, the gun goes back to being a standard one hundred five, so it's only range forty, only anti tank nineteen, mm, but still firepower two, still brutal. Um, only rate of fire one to move, but not overworked. And it has a stabilizer, so obviously you can move fourteen extra um, penalty. Yeah, um, armor's been upgraded with era, so it's um, normal anti tank front anti tank goes from thirteen to fourteen. Obviously, you've got anti tank 16 versus heat weapons. Um, I mean, that's okay. Obviously, against the real high end missiles, you start seeing now like the um, you no know, toe and that kind of thing. That's not going to help you out too much, but against RPGs and the like, it's almost like it's historically accurate, <laughs> exactly. And that's one of the things. I mean, this book is very much written as a proper 1985 book with a yeah. few exceptions on the units. Which is fine, except for the rest of the Team Yankee universe has moved it's on to the like 1990s. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so you haven't got any of the Leopard 2s that they're, you know, they're, they're um, Swedes bought afterwards, that kind of thing. But uh, it's a good tank. Yeah. It's dirt cheap. Soft, the soft stats are good. You know, it's confident, veteran, hit on fours. I like it. Hmm. And it's so, got like, across a two plus, you know. So in 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 the wooded terrain of the you know of the Scandinavian um, north, it seems like a much better choice. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Absolutely doesn't. I'm surprised by that night fighting though, because only because the S tank is is the main line battle tank. It's the modern battle tank. So it's why very would you upgrade odd. Yeah, the older version to have. I don't understand that. No, I, I did not expect it either. I mean, they're both about the same, you know, both about the same age, you know, 50s era, but um, mm. yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, sure. Next up, Swedish infantry. So again, confident veterans. Very much con- a yeah. conscript force, but with a very good um, professional core. You get, these guys come with basically amounts of an M113. Um, but the Swedish, the Swedish oh, chassis. It's, it's got a hell of a gun turret on it. Though. It does look it bad as well. It looks like something out of Mad Max. It looks it's awesome. like a weird, like um, like double slope front, which gives this really distinctive um, silhouette. The back of it looks like an M113. The front of it looks like a boat. Yeah, so it's like down. <laughs> it does. And it's got yeah. some honking great cannon off the top of it as well, and this little tiny turret. Yeah, twenty mm auto cannon. Um, eight helicopter, rate of fire three, firepower two. Uh, sorry, fire, um, rate of fire two on the move, firepower five. That's all you want. That is that is a hell of an infantry fighting vehicle. Yeah, I mean, it takes six, so it's it's going to do straight up BTRs. It might struggle against um, B- BMP threes, but historically, it's only be facing BTRs and maybe BMP ones. So it doesn't feel a typical. Um, infantry themselves against MG teams um, packing disposable rockets. The basic one is fe- is okay at Ant Tank thirteen, but you can upgrade them to have. Um, what is called the M eighty six, but we would we would think of as the AT four, which is what the Americans and the British call it. Um, which basically takes a Carl Gustav round and packets it into a disposable launcher. Tasty. So it's eight tank seventeen, uh, only firepower five. But range yeah. sixteen as well, so it gives it extends your range out for the um disposable rocket. 
You then get three Carl Gustav teams, which are very much like the British Carl Gustav teams. So it's a four-man team with no loss of um, a salt capability. Um, Red Fire 1, 8 Tank 17. You can only upgrade one of those to be a Bill team. Now, yeah. Bill is a wide-guided missile with a, with a um, semi-downward-firing warhead. I think it's inclined to fire down at a 30-degree angle. So it's not a true straight down one like the Toe 2B. Um, but effectively, they model that by making it anti tank 22. Oh it's nasty. God. It's nasty. Yes, yeah, so it's going to go through most things. Plus, uh, guided. <laughs> heat and thermal imaging as well. Oh, so it's my good. God. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. You put smoke down, have you? Oh. Obviously, Gosh. by doing. The only problem with it is you do have a min range. It, it, if it's pinned, you don't get a shot from it. So you, you lose some defensive fire capability, but you do gain that extra shot out of range. So I, think far, tra- I think it's a trap. Really? For I'm, point, yeah. I'm inclined to agree. I think you take you definitely upgrade with the um, AT4 missiles. Yeah. Um, but I would, I think having the, I think you're better off keeping those bills in the decade tank tank units and not putting them in yeah, the infantry because the uh, temptation is to fire one and lose you gone to ground. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, so. Um, like Lee said, if it's if you're pinned, which you are going to be if someone's assaulting you because it's Team Yankee, you know, there's so much small arms fire, you're going to get pinned. It's not mm-hmm. shooting anything. Well, you don't, you haven't got defensive fire anyway with it, with an eight. No, no, but that's fine. It's just the fact that it's just, you're not going to get it. No matter. I know what you're saying. That's a range shot, yeah. But you've also only got, what, 50% chance of ratting. So. I don't know. It just, I don't the like other, those. The other thing to think about thing that's really good. is if you're on the attack. You know, Drop you can just leave that stand on its own on top of a building. You can. Um, Dirty yeah. city player. Can I yeah. just comment, though? I quite okay. appreciate the fact that the special Swedish armor personnel carriers come in a pack of four. Yes. Yeah, but they're resin, which is... It's yeah, like... but that's fine, because if you want the one platoon to go with your infantry, your tank, S-tank platoon company, you're, not buying five. Yeah. you're buying one box... You're buying a box of four, which gives yep. you the three for your platoon, and then one to, to convert into the OP for your awesome artillery, which you're going to take. Mm-hmm. And unlike the Dutch, where you get five in a pack, and you're like, oh, exactly. Oh, you're like, what oh. am I doing with this? Why have I got all these left over? Yeah, it's a little disappointing. <laughs> so far, the rules generally been every every army gets its APC as a plastic. plastic. And this is the first one that doesn't do that. I mean, uh, I can only. I think it's because the front's so wacky, and they don't think yeah. they're going to sell enough of them. The molding of that is very bespoke. <laughs> well, it is, but I mean, there are oh, other well, like, like the F the B four three two. The F V four three two is only used by British. No, yeah, but that, that's kit. made into. You know, APCs. They've got the anti-tank, the mortar carrier. They've got. They've done a. Yeah, but I mean, this one. This one does recon unit. It does the OP. Yeah, but how many are you actually going to sell? Well, each Swedish player is going to want to buy at least no four or five box. No, three or four boxes. Really? You think? Yeah. Yeah, two, three, three three platoons plus the recon platoon. So you think you're running armored companies? I think I'm not. I think people run infantry backed up by armor your way around or. No, yes, thanks. But but the Dutch didn't get their APC in plastic either. That's true. <sighs> no, that is fair. Actually, that's true. It does Hold on. Break the rule I'm first. thinking victimised now. <laughs> Why is my APC not in plastic? <laughs> well, hopefully we revisit that because we, as we discussed previously, there's a lot more nations use that. Um, they use that APC, and Belgians be using it when that comes up. <laughs> Poor Belgium. Crap in a waffle. Yeah. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. pancake. Rest of the formation, you've got an armor box which could be either the S tank or Centurion. You've then got a whole bunch of inbuilt anti tank. Yes. You've got one box for the I- IKV 91 tracked anti tank uh, platoon. Yes. One <laughs> box for the um, Jeep mounted recordless rifle 90 millimeters. Oh, which very tasty. Like they're from Mad Max too. They yeah. definitely like Mad Max. And yeah. one box which covers both, um, has both the anti tank missile options in. Plus, then you have a, a, fir- a last box, which is for the um, eighth box, which is for the recon platoon. Um, That's very tasty. It yeah. is. IKV-91, same chassis as the APC. So you, you know, if you think about the plastic kit, you could have the lower, same common lower hole, different upper. Yeah. Um, it's, it's so teeny. Sorry, it's I said, a... no, I, back, I tell a lie. It's not a common chassis. It just uses common transmission to oh, okay. work. Um, 
It's so teeny. It is. <laughs> um, amphibious, IR. Armor's not huge, but it's a tank destroyer, so what do you expect? <laughs> it's front armor three. Mm-hmm. Armor's yeah. not huge in Team Yankee. It's front armor three, Lee. It's, it might as well not you exist look yet. At, you look at it, it disintegrates. See, I, love, I love the fact that the turreted tank destroyer, there's a turreted tank destroyer, and then there's a, um unturreted tank. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that he's like, oh, it's a turreted tank destroyer. Um, oh. The armor's not great. And meanwhile, the marksman's rocking AT-11. Yeah. Yeah, that's not great either. Tank gun. <laughs> just... a, so, I mean, this thing here, it's not for taking tanks out anymore. This right. thing's very much for shredding BMPs. Yeah. You have these guys lurking around, pop out, pumping a bunch of eight tanks, 17 shots into them, and just like, you can't go toe to tanks, but eight BMPs, it probably can do. I, probably. I, mean, I actually think they're a little bit expensive for what they do. I tend to agree. Five yeah, points. I feel four points probably feels like they should I, be. I've got but... three. They got one. Fu- they got one function. They don't do anything else. I think the problem is with the with the um, recorders jeeps being eight tank four. <laughs> I do love those recorders jeeps. Eight tank again, same eight tank, but um, accurate heat recorders. Um, it, it could be a cool little ambush unit. Let's pop them up, fire them. No, scoot away. No, thank you. I was like, I've got a feeling I end up with my tow jeeps and just die every time in my Israeli yeah. army. Exactly, they'll fire once and well, then get absolutely smashed by artillery. You have got a four-up save, yep. which in Team Yankee isn't to be snotted upon when you're getting shot at by tanks. No, but I never make it with my tow jeeps. Not yeah, that's, that's that's and, and you never fire it with tanks. You fire it with machine guns or artillery. Yes, but you can mm. work around that. Lee, can you work around that? Not so far. <laughs> um, the thing is, though, it's its own separate box. It's dirt cheap, um, so it helps for the formation. In both cases. I mean, all right, five isn't super cheap, but it's still not going to break the bank. So, mm. I think you take this, you take the 90 millimeters, and they just lurk around harassing BMPs. <laughs> Should have. You then get the trade off of um, the P- PVRBV551 um, armored anti tank missile platoon, which is basically a repurposed um, cannon tank destroyer that basically had a new uh, superstructure put on with a tow yep. missile on it. I love that. Uh, no, yep. it's artillery, wasn't it? Wasn't it an artillery piece? It wasn't. I a, thought it was. Um... I don't think it's tank destroyer. I think it's a self. Oh, you're right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's like an infantry gun style thing. Yeah. yeah. It looked a bit like a one two two or a one five two sort of thing. Yeah. And so that basically fires off a standard eight tank twenty one tow missile. The nice. other option that box is the jeep mounted ones, where you get again only three of them, but they can have either the tow or the bill. The bill mm. has a shorter range but higher anti tank. Um, say range forty but anti tank twenty two. Um, but I just again, I just think armored's always the way to go, especially against uh, when you're being dropped on by artillery and stuff. Yeah, Verity's better on all but road. Mm-hmm. So, I, I but so I like to have those cheap mounted ones, they just can't quite. I think, well, I think they're um, not cheap them. enough that you can just throw away, are they? No. That's the problem. I, it's like, also, I mean, that's the thing, like, so three, three, three of the tow mounted jeeps are oh, no. four points. Whereas three of their um, armoured ones is only like three points. And then you get into the recoilless phase where they're the, the same points as the tow arm jeep and they're a recoilless yeah. rifle. There's a few oddities going on the points here. Mm. Um, Recky Platoon is just, again, three of the APCs, basically. And they've got Scout and Spearhead. And it's fairly... It's, 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 that's what it says on the tin, right? Spearheads and then goes off and harasses the enemy artillery. Yeah. <laughs> Standard. <Yeah>. Talking <laughs> artillery. <laughs> Meanwhile. Yeah. 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 We get to support with the band cannon. Look at that! Um, Look it's it crazy. Looks space age, doesn't it? It, it? it looks it looks both old and futuristic at the same at time. Same time, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so it's uh, as I say, skill three plus, which is always good for artillery. Yes. Um, the main gun's got a range of hundred and four inches. Or it's an artillery like piece, wherever you need. Yeah. 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 Or as I like to put it, only out of range at the barn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> even then it's struck in. Yeah, um, eight tank four, five power two plus, um, smoke bombardment, and auto loader. As we know, auto loader just plus one slaps plus one as it were. Boom, it does. Boom, it, boom, boom, boom. That plus one hit is just mm-hmm. absolutely disgusting, especially Warsaw pack stuff. Oh, hit on mm-hmm. a two. Oh, dear. But it's, 
it's kind of good that everything is so good because literally the only artillery in the entire Swedish army is three of these and three support and three allied Finnish carnations. Mm. That's all you get in the entire Swedish force. Yeah, and it's not like no you mortars. Need to it. Yeah, no mortars, no big but no batteries, just three band cannons and three allied carnations. Uh, but it, so. I mean, you still get to take it. If you're doing Swedes, you're definitely going to take this. Oh, thing. gotcha. That's the first yeah. thing you probably put in your army is nine points for that. I mean... Yep. Well, ten points. You put the OP in as well. Oh, sorry, ten points. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you absolutely go right. Yeah. Um, anti-aircraft is basically, like I say, the LVRBV701, which is the same chassis as the tanks, uh, eight tank missiles we are just talking about. Yeah. But they have like... Um, a, I'm not quite sure how this thing's guided, whether it's like a... Manly guy like a blowpipe. It looks kind of like a blowpipe, but it's um range fifty six and rate of fire two, fire power four. Fairly middling. It's um, underwhelming. So, it's underwhelming, is what it is. It's underwhelming, but at least it's cheap, and you can have lots of them. You, you can. The other thing I don't like about it is that it's very because it is because it is just a missile system. It's mm-hmm. doing it's doing one thing again, and it's not cheap enough. As it's not like the. Um, what's the Soviet ones? The, the not the. SA thirteen. Yeah, SA. No, what's the what's the small one on the BDR uh, BRDM chassis? Oh, um, the, uh, not Gecko. Uh, b- 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 it's not the oh, go for it. It's the one below that. It begins with Gaskin. Gaskins, yep. Yeah, because mm-hmm. again, Gaskins, you like. Oh, I'll throw two of them in. These are they're four points. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to take this because you've got no anti aircraft. Well, that's my point. Is you like well, these aren't cheap and they're not doing anything if no one's got any air. But if I don't mm-hmm. take them, I'm kind You're of hurt. yeah, mm-hmm. kind of pants down. I mean, you have got lots of self defense twenty millimeters and all those little way on the on the APCs, mm, which is fighting against helicopters. Yeah, yeah. So you really take one unit, maybe not the two units you can get. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, so Squish also have the HK9, which we said is basically a par helicopter with a tow, yeah. which makes it very meh, because they think 21. Yeah. Yeah. But then we get the awesome, it is the Vigan. Um, <laughs> it's You're got... Like a, vegan bias coming through now. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I, I always like Saab. I mean, the thing, thing is, no. Vigan's like my, my least favourite Saab aircraft, but that's a fairly high bar, so... Because I love Drakens, I love Grippens. So this not being quite as good is still makes it still very good. Yeah, this is the le- your least favourite uh, Da Vinci portrait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's got Maverick, which put, makes it a little costly. Four of these are six po- 16 points. Um, but obviously, 8 Tank 27 is quite handy versus T-80s. Oh, dear God, is it handy. <laughs> and the thing is, so backing that up, and I think it gets a little overlooked, is the 135 mm rocket launcher. Salvo, one shot, 8 tank 5, firepower 3 plus. Yeah. If you get a big, you, what you do is the first turn you go in the, the Mavericks and take out the enemy air defense. Turn two, you probably don't arrive. Turn three, you come back in because you rolled it. And then you start to, then you just find the biggest group of T 55s and, and just drop them. this yeah. salvo on them and just wreck them. It's brutal. Fishing mm. for, what is it, fishing for ones and twos at that point? Yeah, well, I think I think you do that turn one. What? Just take the AA. Turn one, you rock up with your four vegans. You put because they're not going to shoot all four of them down. Give them the chunky points. Yeah, but they get their point sixteen points. They get their back in one well time salvo. Otherwise, you're they're, you, you, you're going to be turn three, turn four. You're too late. They're, they're on you. And then salvo minimum safety distance kicks in. Yeah. Yeah. You just salvo straight away, turn one, you see what anti tank you can take out first, because don't forget the anti tank their anti air doesn't fire until you decide to fire yeah, the Vigans. Yeah. So you hold oh. the Vigans off to end, you pick as much shooting as you can at the anti air, or you use those helicopters if you got them. You don't take the helicopters any. You're not well, bringing them. You know, you just can't afford them. Well uh, with the Vigans. It's not it's not possible. I just think there's far better options for anti tank yeah. than helicopters. Well, the, in the, the, army. the helicopters give you the visibility. They, you can't hide from the helicopters, is the point. Well, that's true. That's true. So you go, right, helicopter, two shots at your AA. You're not going to shoot them back because you're worried about the Vigans. Mm-hmm. You kill one AA, the other one in the platoon, you know, 
may or may not have a shot at the Vigans. The the Rockets also have range sixteen. Yep. So you can standoff. put it at the other end of yeah, the opposite end of the AA units. So maybe there might be you know, might kill the one that's in range if you're lucky. <clears throat> and then you just unleash hell, turn one with salvos. And then mm-hmm. the next turn you pick off surgical strikes and missiles on what's left. So you got a cannon as well? No. Yes, yeah, got a cannon. Yeah, yeah got, a fo- got a foam in me. Uh. Just everything. So you can go hunting hinds as well. Yeah, the only thing, the only thing I say against the 30 mil is it's a bit it's lower rate of fire than normal. It's a rate of fire 2 compared to the rate of fire 3 you normally get. But, you know, it feels like a bit rude to be faulting that on everything, <laughs> everything else on it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and obviously we get lots of new miniatures, like say, new S tank model, yes. uh, new Centurion kit. And it looks awesome. The S tank does look awesome. It's got, definitely got that. Everything looks awesome. The S tank looks awesome. The Centurion looks awesome. The Vigan looks awesome. Bankan looks awesome. The Swedish uh, infantry is very nice in its um, German feel great as well. Yeah. The little, uh, whatever, Volvo truck things look awesome. I do love them. I, you know, I, I, I struggle to take them, but they do look nice. <clears throat> And even the upgrade on the t- on the actual helicopter looks good. The actual bolt on tow missiles <laughs> yeah. in the first sight. Nice. Take, take, take the plastic kit and just have these new bits on. Presumably resin or something. But... Yeah, yeah plastic maybe. Ones. Yeah. But the gun of sight as well on top. Yeah, See, this I, is the army you want. It's not the army you deserve. It's the army you need. Mm-hmm. I think the Swedes are certainly going to be, you know, well received. You know, people go like, oh, I can see this being an interesting force to have. It's probably not like meta breaking by any means, but it's certainly a fun list to play. Okay, uh, Norwegians, just try to pick the pace up here, which is yep. good because there's two formations in this force. <laughs> <laughs> one tank formation, one infantry formation. Take it you or like, leave it. You, you like it's there. And yeah. the rest is Americans. <laughs> Every, yeah, everything else is. So the artillery is standing in one nines, you yep. one battery of those. You get about 15 different flavors of Jeep unit in here, two anti tank units, and um, a recce unit. I think there's also an armor recce as we've gotten to the minute. Air supports either um, US Marine Corps AV8s. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised it wasn't RAF Harriers because um, you know, the big thing with Norway is the Royal Marines would pitch up with a bunch, probably a bunch of Jags or Harriers and call winter camo. Um, you just got, again, two missile-based anti-aircraft um, platoons, both with the same unit, because they've got a gun unit. And in this case, whereas the Swedes had Finnish support and the Finns had Swedish support, the Norwegians get US Marine Corps support. America, truck, yeah. So the Leopards can be backed up by M60s. You can back up your Norwegian M109s with a battery of Marine M109s, just have all the cool bomblets and stuff. You've got a US Marine Corps rifle platoon, which I absolutely hate. It's, it's <laughs> game breaking ship in the game. Mike's laughing in snow camera. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you got Humvee tank section, uh, tank section. Sorry, Humvee anti aircraft section with the Stingers. Nice. Oh. Yeah. So, but you yeah. not you really need. You already got plenty anti aircraft there. It's cheap, though, isn't it? Yeah. And then you have got the option of Cobras, or I'm not quite sure they're here because the US Marine Corps never operated them. Apaches in there as well. <laughs> But the Apache is cool, so I'll forgive it. Yeah. Apache and Snow Camo. Apache, oh, Apache and Snow Camo. That would, that would look very sexy. Snow Dazzle Camo. I, I, I have been toying with the idea of Norwegians and Snow Camo as a, as a force. I think it'd have to wait until after the Finns are done, but. They are very cool. Um, Kind of like these guys. So the actual tank, it's you know, it's a standard European leopard. It's, it's nothing particularly it's special there. No. I think somebody noticed that the actual terrain dash is marginally faster than all leopard 18 rather than 16, Ooh. which is a bit weird. Not the quite sure it is. Cross country skiing, isn't it? Well, Just, yeah, maybe. Yeah. That, that smacks of typo. Uh, yeah, but it's, both, um, but it's on both entries for leopards, so it seems to be a thing. But, but I mean, it, the actual formation itself, it's got two, one or two in the HQ, two mandatory platoons, one optional platoon. A storm group platoon, sorry, storm trooping, which we'll get into a second, backed up by an anti tank troop and a mortar troop. Fairly standard formation for NATO, like a NATO formation, basically. But you know, cheap as chips. You can have up to four tanks of platoon, which is quite good because the three tank platoons can hurt sometimes. Mm. Main thing with the regions is the infantry, though. Um, M113 Storm Squadron, as they're called. 
So two mantra platoons, an optional platoon, a tank platoon, eight tank troop, and then a more choice of eight one or one oh seven mortars. You can't have both, you have to choose. Oh, that's a bit hard. Farmer. Yeah, and the thing is, I'll skip ahead to this. There is no choice. The eighty-one millimeter has better range. It's <laughs> um, got uh, it's got sorry, it's got better range, and it's no worse in firepower. But it has smoke. They're both firepower four. It's only got slightly worse anti-tank with one versus two. Yeah. But you, but it's yeah. um, one point less. I'm not sure. So I'm not quite sure where you take the one oh seven. Um, yeah, so still, still troop. Not the biggest platoons in the world. It's basically four MG teams, three Carl Gustav teams, which being assault five plus, I'm assuming are like the two man sort of like stands rather than the big ones you get the British. Yeah, Dutch ones. Yeah, more like, exactly. It's very much like a Dutch organisation. You then get two M two M one thirteens and what they call two NM one three fives, which are basically a reworked one thirteen with a twenty millimeter gun turret. Um. Now, as, as normal M113s only have a 7.62 mm machine gun, no 50 cal, it makes those 20 millimeter ones a lot more effective as a standout um, no, gun unit. And mm. you can upgrade to have all your M113s be upgraded to be an M135, which yeah. I think you're going to yeah. do just get extra firepower. I think the big thing with these guys, I mean, so they're only sort of like confident veteran... Um, the big thing they get is the Erix missile. Now the Erix is a Norway is a French wire guided missile. It's basically like a sawn off Milan. A sawn um, off Milan. Yeah. Well, so you got a range. So you got a range of sixteen, but yeah. no minimum range. So you can use it to oh. fire. <laughs> yeah. Anti tank twenty four. <laughs> Intimidation plus one. Yeah. yeah. And tan- <laughs> and tan- and tandem warhead, and thermal oh imaging. God. And guided, so wait, it's this one, two, three, four, it's equal. It so guided heat, no assault, time warhead, and thermal imaging. So, no assault, I mean, presumably means you have to break off the first time you fire these guys, yeah, yeah, in assault, but you do get defensive fire, but you don't have a moving rate of fire. So, if you get pinned, you're gonna lose defensive fire. That's crackers, and that's the thing that makes me worry about them because the Carl Gustav's obviously. It's slow firing, so if you're pinned, it's obviously an extra plus from the hit, but at least you can still fire. Yeah, you can still roll fives on a dice. If yeah. you're not rolling a dice, you can't. <laughs> you, you exactly. Can't so anymore. if you if you get pinned, you lose all your eight tanks. You you can't just upgrade some of the um car stuff. So you've got to upgrade all of them for two points. So it's it's a tricky one because it's a big leap in eight tank capability, but you do suffer if you get pinned. And it's and an either or, right? Yeah. yeah but it, I, What's going to survive two hits from that? What, t- 10 T62s? Mm-hmm. Three no, hits. Yeah. No. Well, the, the point is two hits and the assault's driven back. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. And being 10 warhead, even era armor doesn't get a look yeah. on the swing. So if they're alive mm-hmm. and they're going to be hit on what, threes? Fours if you've got smoke? Oh, no. Yeah. So the real thing there is if they pin you. Yeah. I certainly think it might be worth having one unit still with Carl Gustavs, but yeah, certainly having two units of Eric's missiles might be the way to go. And they sound more Norwegian. Eric's. Carl Gustavs, yeah. No, Eric's. Oh, Eric's. 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 Oh, yeah. Eric's. Eric's. Um, we need your missiles. The mm, Russians yeah. are attacking again. <laughs> I think the other thing, the other thing to note here is that basically, that's the real thing I really like about them, is they get the NM142 um, anti tank troop. Uh, basically, much like a, um, a, the hammerhead in the US, it's got the hammerhead raw on its launcher, so it stays on the ground when it fires. But it has it, it can be equipped with a tow too, which gives it obviously the anti-tank <laughs> twenty three a tow as well or a tow too. <laughs> it's important. Yeah, For the... and it still has a machine gun. So even if you, if enemy has many tanks, you can still rock around and fire a machine gun to people, which is always so, handy. Look at you, Passage. Mm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a little pricey. I mean, four of them is nine points, but it's a very handy eight tank shot to have, I think, in a platoon, especially backing up those Eric's missiles. Yeah. Have you got any more of those lovely Eric's missiles? I mean, <laughs> is that the only I, uh, is that the only way you can get them? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Eric's only appears in the infantry, and then and the M142 only appears over the two formations. 
So hence the reason <laughs> Infantry is going to be popular. <laughs> yeah, it's such a gamey bastard. What's that? I'm like, well, if you took two platoons mm-hmm. and then you moved one platoon to Eric Missiles into defensive, like eight inches behind the other platoon, mm-hmm. and those platoons missiles eight inches behind the other platoon, yeah, they'd have to pin the wrong platoon to assault. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's, 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 you got the, the whole six inch bubble for coherency you have to try and set. No, you don't. It's defensive, it doesn't matter. Oh, sorry, you, you can move these guys out of deployment. It, yeah. Yep. yeah. After you've you've changed, yeah. Eddie. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm just looking at things going, how can I bring yeah, you've this? you've changed. How can I bring <laughs> this? You never, you never used to be like this. I mean, you know, I've, it's a thing. <laughs> this is why we got rid of Ben. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um. Yeah, so in support, you got um, basically some tow jeeps. Um, hard to like these. You only get two of them in a platoon, and you can't have tow two. They're rubbish. So it's like, pass, yep. What? Um, you don't have like tow jeeps? No. Nope. They look cool. I mean, they look cool, but... Okay, I, there you go. I'm fine. I, I, I need you to say they look cool, because they look really cool. <laughs> they do look cool. I must have buy a box of these just to use the civilian tr- jeeps around the scatter terrain kind of thing. Like pickups of the um, Wolverines. Yeah, they just look awesome. Yeah, um, you can you can get them as a wrecking unit as well. And we, in the second, we'll get on to. And they are cross four plus, so they have yeah, apparently, be... apparently the same cross country ability as an S tank. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Phil Yates in one of these and tell him to drive forward, and I'm going to chase yeah. behind him in an S tank. And if he gets stuck, I'll run him over. Yeah, that's a fair <laughs> test. That's fair, right? Because it's yeah, an equal the, chance. Well, it's an empirical, it's an empirical um, measurement then as well. That's <laughs> exactly, data. Yeah. That's data at work. It's putting. I mean, if he gets stuck, by his logic, I'll get stuck immediately straight away well, after. No, and also, if so he he'll be stuck, fine. Yeah, if you get stuck, he's not going to yeah. run you over, is he? No, he'll be gone. I, I, in Phil's defence, I'm going to point out Wayne wrote the book, not Phil. So we need to put Wayne in the in the truck. Oh, Wayne, sorry, sorry, Wayne, Wayne. If you get in a uh, a food tow and tow and tank truck. Yeah, with and I get an S tank, and we have a race. Although to be, fair, to be fair, he does have the slightly scarier tow missile. So if he does get stuck, and I go past him, <laughs> <laughs> for two, yeah. Um, I said the LM one nine five is basically much like the Saab, um, the Swedish missile because it is a Swedish missile, just on an M one thirteen chassis <laughs> with a little seat. Yeah. That's well, always important to have comfort. That's quite cute. So it's a Z113 with a, a, a pedestal pillar mounted. Um, what's the missile? Is it just um, the one, RBS 70. Sweet Saab RBS 70. Saab RBS 70 with a little seat for the gunner to sit on. Was it okay. pedestal? Don't get that with the Iranian M113. No, you it? don't. No. Mm. no. Or a Grail. Discrimination. Yeah, hold this. Little, I- little IKEA flat pack seat on there. <laughs> yeah. So. It's discrimination. Do you to pass the Allen key around? Yeah, I mean, one left. <laughs> I get it's not great AA, but it's only AA you're getting, so love it. All well, the stingers if you take the American support. Um, M one nine fifty six isn't bad though. Oh no, it's, it's not bad. That's what we're just what we we're saying. I mean, it has got a machine gun. This one, unlike the other one, so this can do something else. Yeah, something else. So they have no aeroplanes, at least. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the other one has no. Oh, does, so the other well, one has a backup machine gun as well. They both. Does, I don't think yes, is it? Yeah, I just look back. LVRBV has a machine oh. backup machine gun as well, oh. so it's not entirely useless. Just mostly, mostly say, four points of machine gun carrier. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, so. um, I say Norwegian artillery support is the M109. It could either be the short barrel or the long barrel version. You I mean, always, I'll, always go long. On yeah. a six by four board, you don't need a long barrel. But you get a better anti tank. Always it go just long. Looks better as well. Yeah, doesn't oh, it doesn't look, look bad. It doesn't yeah. look so chody. Uh, it's the same AT. It's the same AT. Yeah, you mean, oh, you, uh, oh, indi- I mean, I mean, I mean directly, <laughs> indirectly, correct, correct. I mean, directly. who's firing direct these days? It, yeah. it comes up. You ask the Abbots. You ask the Abbots who's firing you directly. <laughs> I mean, that's the Abbots, though. Yeah, these are just big Abbots, aren't they? These are like I don't know. Gabbots. The... No, they're like priests. <laughs> they're the next one up. Oh, priests yeah. are believed that uh, cardinals. Cardinals. There you go. Oh wait, cardations. Oh god. I'm so confused. Why is everything a priest? Why is everything a bloody <laughs> Why is everything clergyman? Religious? And it didn't help the Americans when they eventually did give the M one nine name. They called it the Paladin, so it still links <laughs> into that time. No priest, no priest, a cardinal, a clergyman. Yeah. 
Uh, unfortunately, you get no special ammo with this thing. It's just basically HE. It's Boo. just basic. Um, M one thirteen OP. Basic. Annoying, but laughingly, the picture shows it with a fifty cal and the stats show it with a seven point six two. I know which one of those I'd rather have. Yeah. yeah. Um, the recon options either take some more of those NM one three fives, three of those as a recce for three points. Not the front go wagons. Yep. Or well, for three points, you can have five jeeps with fifty cows, two with fifty cows, and three with. Um, They're not just jeeps, guns. though, are they? They're oh, the Mercedes, Mercedes, Mercedes yeah. jeeps. Yeah, Mercedes Mercedes Benz. G wagons. Yeah. G-wagons. Oh, Lord, but you give me a Mercedes Benz, yes. Yeah, yeah, you can be a drug dealer on the on the flames of just all battle spray, I mean, the spray and black. Gloss paint done. <laughs> yeah, they got your secret service unit. Yeah, <laughs> it's um, no camo. It's black no G wagon driving on, around. Hold on, G wagon. Let's play drug dealer or secret service agent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they both got Mac tens. Yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, um, for completeness, the Harrier stats are repeated here as well for the. Uh, but obviously, these are US Marine Corps ones, so not cause um, the RAF ones. They have to call BL seven five fives. They do too. Um, yeah, which, at which point Mike says, "Well, I still managed to kick your ass with that with their um, CBE one hundred. So, what's it worth?" It? Mm, that's very yeah. unfair. It's true. Uh, yeah. Nothing much to wear new new figures for these guys. Basically, Norwegians and Danes get the catalogs combined. Um, the final insult. Jeep- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just, you don't even get your own catalog. Hmm? You basically get Jeeps, Norwegian infantry, and then some new M one thirteen kits. Basically, combine a, a plastic lower and a new resin upper for either the anti tank or their transport versions. Yeah, yeah, but say, the, is that going to be yeah. the Swedish Centurions look really good in camo? Mm-hmm. No, well, so the Danish ones, the Danish ones look like the proper green and black ones, they're like old school British ones, too. <laughs> um, yeah, so talk about the Danes, I'm going to go for it really quickly because my god, the Danes get sort of re. We get talk about this redheaded stepchild. Oh, so, so the, the two the two, two cool things that we made Danes cool F sixteens and upgraded Walker Bulldogs don't even appear in the book. Oh no, which is like the, the two unique things, and well, not unique because Norwegians get F sixteens as well. Well, that's it. Sorry, yeah, the Norwegians don't even get their upgraded chaffies. They're chaffies into the nineties. <laughs> new, new new engines and new optics, but still the old set seventy six millimeter. Because if you're in the middle of our end of nowhere, a chaffy yeah. is king. <laughs> Actually, no, I think a chaffy might go upgrade to a ninety millimeter. It's a Walker Bulldog. Oh, God, ninety millimeter and a chaffy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So Danes basically you got two tank options: leopards. The leopards were basically on Jutland, and the Centurion DKs were basically on the islands. Um. The theory being that because on the on the Jutland they'd be supporting West Germans who don't also have leopards. Who, who it says, makes us stand that crap near us. Yeah. Yeah. Um they get so you just get M113 Armored Infantry Company. Support wise, they get a whole bunch of West German stuff, so Leopard 2 or Leopard 1s, Marders or M113s, Rolands and Gepards, which is handy because it gives them some anti aircraft. The Lars, which is always fun. And two units of the par, which is always quite handy. Yeah, two units, nice. Two twos is two two. Yeah, two twos. Yeah. And then you get like say Danish support is M one nines, OPs, some more scout jeeps. Um, my best thing is reserve this in unupgraded Centurions that are still running around twenty pounders in the nineteen eighties. <laughs> um, red eyes, and then either choices tornadoes or Harriers. Interestingly, which I guess. Nice thing is about having the Harriers in this the Norwegians is that's a good proxy for the F sixteen. All right, okay. Sure. Yeah. Well, I had the Maverick capability, you probably they should have, but at least it gives them something. Um yeah, so the formations are the same for the Centurions and Leopards. One HQ tank. Yeah, it's a very, very much British model. One HQ tank, two mandatory platoons, each of which has three tanks as platoon, one optional tank platoon, and then infantry platoon. A tow platoon, a heavy mortar platoon, and a M109 platoon, which is quite a handy little formation. Mm, quite lots bad, of inbuilt it? artillery, which is good. Um, leopards are pricey. They're, stand- they're standard Europe. <clears throat> Not quite sure why they're pricey because they are ten points rather than nine points that the Norwegians got. Mm. Should someone check that Norwegians nine points? No, I'm getting it wrong. Uh, Norwegians were. 
Yeah, the Wizards were nine points for free, and the Danish ones are ten points for free. I'm not quite sure why. Hit on fours, 18, 19, range 40. Yeah, but they're also, they're also only confident trained rather than confident veteran. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, just double checking a bit. Yeah, so yeah, Norwegians, Norwegians are confident, confident veteran. Tactical ten. That's two, all the same. Two plus cross. Is it all the same. Same mm-hmm. stat line. Yeah, not quite sure what oh, difference is. So yeah, go Norwegian, go go Danes for leopards. Apparently, um, a Centurion has at least got a one hundred five millimeter gun. And it has got laser range finder, but that's probably about as, as upgraded as it gets. So still at the original, you no, know, front armor 13, side armor 6. Mm. Um, <clears throat> the new engine does get a little bit more grunt, but it's still very much tactical 10, and then doesn't get much better after that. <laughs> it, it, I mean, its road dash is the same as most things terrain dash. For, it's, it's got example. the same road and cross country dash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it's a Centurion. I love them. Well, we're going. Still, we don't need roads. <laughs> it's uh, Holland. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's it's cheaper. I mean bizarrely, the HQ tanks are the same cost between the Leopard and the Centurion, but the troops, the Le- Leopard ones, are ten ten points versus the Centurion's eight points. So, a bit weird. Into the bookitis. M one thirteen infantry, a very standard here, very much like the, Dan- the Norwegians and Danes. So three MG teams, three Carl Gustav teams. The M113s at least have 50 cows, which is good. Sure. Um, but yeah, and these infantry are cheap. It's like five points for a platoon. Oof. But obviously, only confident trained. That's still pretty, pretty still good. Still hit on fours. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, formation wise, again, you've got two, two mandatory platoons and an optional. You've got two uh, mortar platoons. Um, separate boxes, the 81s and the 120s, plus the 109s. So that's three artillery units in one formation. Yeah, that's pretty heavy again, isn't and, it? And a tank platoon and a tow platoon. So it's a good little formation. It's all dirt cheap. I mean, two mortars is one point. Mm, I've got a question about this when, we, when we've when done this section. Oh, mm-hmm. I've just been rubinating. Um, to, the toes are standard toes. We get a big platoon of four of them, but I ain't tanked away one. Uh, support wise, like say Centurion Tank Hunter. So these are reservists, but the stat, they set, the fluff says they're reservists, but the stats are the same as the rest of the regular units. <laughs> but <laughs> five yeah. points for three tanks because on with a 20 pounder, which say eight tank 17. Does it matter if you're in the side? No, this is, the, this uh, is my, mm. uh, Or again, you use it as um, a BMP hunter. Yeah. Because you know, no matter what you throw at me, even if you fire your um, eight tank 19 missiles, I can save it just about. Obviously, if it's BMP two and it fires off an eighty twenty one, then it's obviously a bit, a bit hazier. <laughs> but at that point, you're winning surely because you just fired mm-hmm. an eighty twenty one missile at a bloody yeah. Centurion. At uh, literally a nineteen fifties tank. Yeah. yeah. Have you um, seen the fact their stat line for the MGs? The fifty, yeah, the fifty cal spotting rifle can actually fire as a, a single shot. Yeah, I, I love it. That. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, that gives them accurate. So if they stay still, they can. Ignore long range, but yeah, they, otherwise they can fire the 50 cow and actually kill people with it. <laughs> <laughs> Snipe them off. <laughs> Three round burst. Um, you've got red eyes, which are a fairly unspectacular man pad choice. You no know, range 48, rate of fire free. You can put in four of them, so this is a gives you player coverage basically. Um, M109s are all fairly standard, and the OP in there as well. Yeah. And the last thing is the scout group, which is four Merc Jeeps with um, not only a 7.62 machine gun, but can also fire a law shot. Nice. For douche. And it, yeah, obviously, obviously some of these are, things things at the top, of, yeah. winds a window down, fires a law out. So, yeah. <laughs> kills law drive kills the driver. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fries himself. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, so uh, for Danes, I, f- I feel like they kind of, they're there. Yeah, for completeness, um, they got the, there's a distinct lack of oomph about them, isn't there? Yeah, and by that I mean like anything to go. Ooh. I think the coolest thing about them is all the, all the West German support you can give them to like they you, know, you could back them up with some leopards, twos. You could back them up with some guepards. Yeah, um, obviously putting in the West German helicopters is a fairly good idea as well with the hot missiles. 
I just, yeah, I think they're a bit. So they're, uh, they're fine. They're adequate. So what were you what were you ruminating on? Why were well, I just wondered if if this is unfortunately the the, the sort of um, dawn of NATO spam, more NATO spam. Because these tanks are very, very cheap. And then as any points out on a 6x4 board, mm-hmm. there's only pl- so many places to hide your flank. And I don't want it to be, but I'm worried now. I mean, Le- Leopard Spam has been a thing at some of the tournaments. I've seen it people Leopard going Mons. with Leopard Spam. Yeah. Um, obviously, Centurion might, being slightly cheaper, might lend itself to that. I'm not quite sure it's a big enough change. That... But also, the small think... platoon sizes are going to limit that. Because you're only getting three per platoon. Yeah. Not ten. Yeah, uh, I guess uh, you've also got decent infantry as well. So, mm. you know, throwing all these cheap tanks in is not going to make an awful lot of difference to your army composition, is it? No. I don't know. It just worries me now because I, I I think there's some stuff in here that's super cheap. But on the other hand, we never go to flank, we never go to team making tournaments anyway because we hate the oh, exactly. BTR spam. We hate the BTR spam. We hate the T fifty five spam. So we just don't like yeah. tournaments. Yeah. yeah, but most guys can have all the fun with it. Yeah, you like um, you like tournaments, Eddie. You, you'd be quiet. I, I like playing to all tournaments of one specific type. <laughs> all the other ones I play. <laughs> <laughs> I just like playing games. Damn it! I know. Absolutely. And talking of games scenarios, which we'll continue not to play out of. Um, we should really play, <laughs> should really play the scenarios from the book. We really should. Yeah, you are. That's a bingo card right there. <laughs> um, basically, each of the three core nations gets a scenario. No scenario for Denmark. Oh, God. Um, we really are. I've <laughs> forgotten. Ginger stepped out. Oh, my God. Yes. The Finns get the coolest one because they have a mechanism for fog of war in there in the, in the scenario oh, where cool. each each unit defending unit generates two tokens which you put down. Uh, so I mean, just no, when you note down which token is a live token, which token is a decoy token. Oh, gene stealer blips. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Um, the scenario so puts in um, what's called the open, open woods terrain type, which is basically um, these you know, the wood. Basically, the whole table is going to be covered with wood, unless it's got some other terrain feature in. Oh, I like that. Um, the woods are basically more open, so you don't do cross checks. Um, but line of sight is blocked if it's you can see up to twelve inches for the wood, rather than six inches. Six inches is the wood for a normal wood. Um, still counts as tall terrain, so you can only see you know two inches in effectively. Yeah. Um, and dash movements must be at terrain dash. I quite like that. But, though. Yeah, it's basically like, you know, you basically get a whole bunch of BTR infantry versus a bunch of Russian BMP infantry. Blundering into each other. Yeah, and you've got the recallist yeah. rifles with the Appalass upgrades and that kind of thing. So you can just basically start picking off all these Soviet tanks they try and come through the woods, basically. Yeah. Also, it's very Finnish. What is it? Is it Motti? Is that the right word? Where they did it like um, the Soviet columns in the Winter War. They chopped them up like yeah. firewood. I think they were called I think, I think that was it, yeah. I remember it from the early war book, wasn't it? Yeah, not the um, football commentator. <laughs> um, the Swedish one basically is a bit more standard. Um, you have the open woods still, but also like this, there's a, there's a line in here on the on the map saying clear lane in woods left for electrical lines. It's like a fire, like the fire break lines you used to have for the yeah. fire, the pylons going through, which is really cool. Um, again, you get a whole bunch of um, Swedish infantry backed up by a small S tank formation, effectively. Go up against T fifty fives and BMP BTR infantry. Um, no fog of war. That one's a face stand in the setup. It's basically like no retreat. But um... I'm not the sound of this open woodland though. Yeah, I'm going to try and play around with that in some of our mission in our own games. Yeah, I think. That, that's quite interesting. It could reduce reducing it to like was it te- twelve? Did you say? Yeah. So uh, so it works basically. At um, open woods, provide concealment for teams inside terrain. Line of sight to a target team is blocked if it's more than two inches through open wood terrain, unless the range is 12 inches or less. Okay. Um, I think in all woods, it's six inches or less. So it's got slightly longer sight. So when you're in the wood, you've got slightly longer sight ranges, basically. Sure. Um, pardon? Sure, that sounds good. Hmm. Yeah. And then, like I say, it's tall, still counts as tall terrain, so obviously you can't see in it from aircraft and woods. Yeah, which is good. Um and teams at the edge of the open woods are concealed. Dash movement must be at terrain dash speeds. Unlike woods, open woods do not require cross test. I like so that. So S tanks, yeah. yeah, that's why you like it because your S tanks have to worry about a four plus cross. No, I just, I just like the idea that it, they thought about the cross check being mm-hmm. a problem in the um, in the woodland. 
I think that's good. Yeah. That's, could, could be quite interesting. That'd be good for one doing like the Hurtigan Forest or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it's kind of like how in the, Bol- the old Bulge books, the version three had a similar rule for their mm-hmm. open woods, basically. And the Norwegian mission is basically fighting in the mountain pass and get a whole bunch of M113s and leopards versus fairly typical Soviet force. So, yeah, cool missions. And that's it. That's the book. Hmm. So, I think I I was surprised how much I liked it, actually. I wasn't expecting expecting to. No. No. I mean, oh, no, all joking aside, like, obviously, having an S tank in the game is, is. Far, far better than not having an S tank in the game. It's the dream. It is the dream. It's it's been long the dream. But I think that that is quite interesting. It's an inventory centric book. So it's yeah. the first one we've really seen apart from Red Dawn, where infantry's kind of taken the the, the sort of showcase as the as standout units. I quite like that. Hmm. As it should be as well. There's not going to be too many um. Abraham's running around in the Nordic fjords, is there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not for long, at least. No. What do you guys think? Welcome edition? I've, yeah, I, I, I think a new book in it is always going to be a good thing. I'm trying very hard to resist the temptation to start writing lists. For like, so- <laughs> everything, for which is always a good sign. Oh, my God. I mean, we know, we know Duncan's going to Swedes. What are you going, Eddie? What nation... I, I'm not going to think about it too much. So <laughs> I'm just going to say, yes, yes, I would. And then once, so, I finish, <laughs> once I finish relocating my hobby stash. I was going to say, as a, as a proponent of captured kit, I do quite like the idea of the fins. I know it's not strictly Ooh. captured, but it kind of has that flavour. Yeah. Misappropriated. Misappropriated. <laughs> And then, like taking the enemy's kit and turning it back on them—that's for sure. No, it's the it's the final, it's the chef's kiss, isn't it? Of uh, oh, beautiful. Okay. Um, obviously, we'll probably do it in the next episode. We'll do a you and news army based on this, and we'll have a play around with it. Um, Don't do it, please, no. <laughs> but um, just before yeah, that, just... it'll be added to cart, and then it'll be in the stash. <laughs> oh, really? Ah, that's weird. Can't get into the Discord. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, events, Eddie. Events then. Um, so very soon, as in next weekend. So I don't know if this will be a point out by then. Fifteenth and sixteenth of July is Attack at Devizes Mid War Hundred One Points Multi Park Competition Show, Trade Stands Participation and Games. Very good show. I've been there once uh, with Ben actually many years ago. Yeah, many years uh, Italian army. When I, I, was, I was playing early war with my Matildas and the opponent, I think it was Rex King, had so many T26s that died, I literally couldn't drive to the objective in that game. As it should be. He, he blocked the entire street with tank Rex, which <laughs> meant my movement eight Matildas could not get to the objective to win the game. Um 22nd of July is the Bucks Open Summer 2023. Flames of War Late War, 111 points. Yeah, I'm considering that. I would do, only I am out of brownie points. Uh, 111 points at Tabletop Republic in High Wycombe. Check out tabletoprepublic.com for tickets. Uh, Then we have the 4th, 5th, and 6th of August is the ETC Midwar. Very excited for that. That's going to be fun. Um... The 19th of August is the Salt Lake Open in Utah, which is a Flames of War 170 points again. Popular points. Late War. Who's running um, that? Do we know? Is it one of the is it one of the crew? That was is it Mike. Uh I can't remember the name. It somebody's uh Lee sent it's the Salt Lake Open 2023. Blah blah blah. Carl Stop person oh, there on the Discord. So I don't know if Carl. He is now. Yep, he is. You're now running the whole thing, Carl. Good luck. (laughs) Good luck, Carl. Um, The 23rd and 24th of September is the Flames of War UK Nationals at Battlefield Hobbies. Don't know if I'm going to make that one, even though the team, the ETC team are like, oh, you can share a bed and oh, we can get you a discounted ticket and all this other stuff to come and play. And I'm like, moving house. I don't know if I can. Um, Oh, Eddie. Yeah, moving moving lockup stashes is not good. 
I'm terrified of the prospect of seeing what I'm going to do. It's it's just leave it where it is. No, because then it would for, won't form a singularity of hobbiness and implode the world. <laughs> I, feel, I feel much like CERN running the first test if I'm going to move one of my hobby into one location. Are you Robert Oppenheimer? <laughs> yep, I am. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know how he feels. The pressure on that man's shoulders does not equate to the pressure my hobby supply puts on the Earth's mantle. Um, the 11th and 12th of November is Warfare Reading at Farnborough. It's late war. We... We we also know that there's chess clocks. There he are says, pulling pin and retiring. <laughs> there are chess clocks, not provided by the sounds of it as well. Bring your uh, own chess clock. Yep. Yes, Mind so you had to bring or an app on your phone, which would be nice and yep. cheap. And chess clocks themselves aren't expensive, but don't I? Did we did we reach out to who was running it? Harry. So yeah, we asked. Well, ha- Harry's not running it, but Harry knew who was running it. So Hi, was... Harry. The actual Harry on Discord, not the fake Harry who's not on Discord. No. <laughs> yep. No wait. The actual Harry on Discord, who isn't the Harry I thought he was, who came down to the. Well, that uh, went very dodgeball then. Two Harrys. Yeah. I'm confused now. Two Harrys. Harry, yeah, pirate. Yeah. That's what I heard. Yeah. yeah. So we, we we reached out and we got some we got some of the feedback on it on why it's been done how it's going to work and there has been at least some consideration on what's going on with it. So I think that we need some more clarity, Let's... but I'm all right. I'm fine. Let's do it. I can play turns in ten minutes. Exactly. It's not going to really bother me too much because I'll burn through it. It's going to be yeah, well. That's, that's what sure. I was kind of the opinion of. So it was a case of yes. So the idea is... There's one more thing to faff around with, that's all. Well, not really, because it's whack a button. It's no different than going, it's your turn. You just go, it's your turn, click. Um, And it's... Because you get an hour... Is it an hour and a half? An hour and 15. You just play it's hour and a half. Yeah, an hour and 15. An hour and 15, so it's a two and a half hour game. And yes, there are things that the opponent can do to bleed your time if they're asking questions and all that kind of nonsense. But that, if anything, makes it more obvious that they're doing that. If that is a tactic they're trying to play, um, but anyway, who knows? Uh, that's one for another time. A, a big okay, another time. We'll leave that for another discussion about chess clocks and how it works in Flames of War in a game where it's not. Oh, we'll try it. Dice has got some chess clocks, I think. Oh, because you have it. Well, I have a ticket. I have a ticket anyway for Warfare. I have a hotel room. I'm excited, regardless. Yeah, you've even got, if we just um, go. Yeah, <laughs> you got Leaf to top and tail with. Big spoon, little spoon. Yep. Carpal box. <laughs> uh, second and third of December, a world in flames. Two flames of war, late war at Tabletop Republic again in High Wycombe. One hundred and eleventy-one points late yeah. war. We might make that. Is that December? Did you say that is December second and third? That might work. That might work. Yeah, I can see it. Maybe. My, oh, my bad. Do that. That's all work out. I don't know if I can deal with warfare not being the last tournament of the year though. What psychologically? Or? Yeah, that might okay. re- rewrite my brain. Um, then we have in 2024 the Icelandic Nationals Operation Polar Bear Seven in the Reykjavik, yeah. uh, February 17th, 2024. I want to go. Still tempted by that. Uh, I want to go. Uh, I want to go. We'll see. We'll see, boys. We'll see. We'll see what we can mangle. Um, and then the 8th and 9th of June, 2024. Is the bomb bash? Da, da, da. Yeah, which is the eighty years. Eighty years. Yeah, sorry, right. seventy. No, we had seventy. Eighty years anniversary of D Day. Of some event. We're not sure Somewhere. What. Some point. Yeah. Fake news. The fake moon landing. Right. <laughs> that is the events I have for today. I think that's it then. Yeah, kind of shoot and scoot. Oh, a bit a quick internet famous to the person on Facebook who asked how events were listed. And I posted them to our podcast, and then they said that they were already a patron. Um, I've forgotten your name already, so sorry. <laughs> so <other than> that, <laughs> yeah. But you know who you are, and now you should feel extra internet famous. <laughs> <laughs> I think my reply to that comment was <laughs> hashtag awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Eddie. <laughs> Really, really, really do that patron engagement there. Well done. It's, oh, I'm, uh... I'm rocking it 24-7. I live and, <laughs> live and breathe my supporters. 
<laughs> Let's shoot and scoot out of this failed cross check. Right, so which, which Scandinavian nation are we going to scoot as? Trained. Poor Danes. Trained. The Danes. A trained oh. Dane. Five. We passed. There we go. Get in. They shot and Scott <laughs> in there in their ridiculous centurion. The Armored Train Wreck of a podcast you've been listening to was Shoot and Scoot, the Flames of World podcast and the team at Breakthrough Assault at Code UK was brought to you by support from Battlefield Hobbies, Dice of War, Frontline Terrain and the flattest of flattiest flat panzers. Oh, it's mm. so lovely. S tank. <laughs> so good. So good. Yeah, but they had Damien Lewis doing this really weird rendition of the national anthem. Oh, wasn't it like you know an how, Elvis or something? Well, it's like you know how when you the Yanks do the, their do their national anthem and, sit and, and they, they get someone singing it, they insist on like dragging out every single note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that, so you couldn't sing along. God it's, save the king. Oh. Yes. <laughs> it was just yeah. so, so oh. weird. Was was he sober? Said him victorious. Oh, I mean, I wasn't. Thank you very much. <laughs> I wasn't, and I noticed, yeah. <laughs> oh, Damien Lewis. Very good actor. Terrible. Not a great singer. No. I mean, you know, if he's not charging Nazis in Market Garden, what is he doing? Oh, well, he's less offensively ginger now, though, isn't he? So there is that as well. Offensively ginger. Yeah. That's, the ver- that's the version five Flames of War rule, is it? Offensively ginger. The yeah. opponent must re roll uh, saves in defensive fire. It's just like, what have you done? We're trying to breed you out. <sighs> oh, good. No, right. no, 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 it's not your Jenks discussion in the podcast. It's all good. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. no. It's, a, it's a proven thing. It's by accident. It's not their fault. It's not like anyone's deliberately trying to breed them out. <laughs> Although there is something unsettling about ginger pubic hair. I'm just going to say that. I don't know what it is, but it's unsettling. <laughs>